too, the ring run down live stream with Jay and Sorry. It didn't, it didn't quite seem as uh, robust when you took away the heavy drone. Uh, how's it going? Yeah, really good. Really good. I'm all for that. Um, it's, uh, as I think I said before we started, a, a feeble effort at vocal effects and playing around in comparison to uh, your back catalogue uh -huh. and your history. But yeah, uh, Jamie Liddell, um, thanks for joining me. Absolute pleasure. Man. Likewise, yeah, I feel like I've I'm getting sort of initiated into the uh, you know the modular universe because well, I'm I'm really sort of in a, just a beginner. Yeah, but, you know. But it's interesting with all, and we won't dive too far into background. We spoke a little bit recently on um, esoteric modulation, which is a bit more of a general chat, um, and there's plenty of content out there we'll link to as well. But it's interesting with your history coming into Yarorak. I think you've a um, a very fulsome career to to uh take nick's bat nick bat's word you're not allowed to say mm -hmm. fulsome on the internet without people shouting nick bat at you which is, oh really yeah he owns fulsome he, he owns fulsome <laughs> yes. yeah it's true i don't hear fulsome that often it is it is a rare expression and i'll take it i'll do any excuse to take a fulsome uh yeah uh, well thanks yeah it's funny i well I suppose the thing is, maybe some people know this, I got quite heavily into Max MSP to mm. do my live show, which is really what I say bought this house. And mm. it's not an exaggeration. A touring solo was was my main income. And it was all thanks to the the looper that I made in Max MSP, which took me months. It took me about six months of my life to to learn and get confident and make a system that was stable enough to go out and you know i i opened for james brown and york with that looper <laughs> do you know what i mean and beck and like it was just a ramshackle piece of msp if you like look behind and saw the cabling you'll be like no mate don't do it but i tried i it was solid it was solid as a rock that thing you could do whatever you wanted you could just mash up the controls and it never crashed so like that was the thing. I just road tested that beast and I just learnt my instrument and that was a really a pretty essentially a modular experience, you know. Obviously Max MSP users know. You're you're patching, you know? Yeah. So I I was really involved with that. So this workflow is not completely alien to me. And I did have like a, you know, an MS twenty, MS fifty and for a while, you know, the SQ mm. and sort of messed around with that. But I was never really taken with that. But when I shared a studio with Christian Vogel, um, he had a synthy, and really I came up working on the synthy thanks to him. He was the guy who taught me synthesis. You know, really hats off to him because he's a he's a beast. Mm. And um, so yeah, he showed me a lot. And so yeah, I got some weird shit in my rack now. <laughs> <laughs> so that Max MSP patch was that the is the shortcut command P the magic of the sub patch where you can make it look pretty up front but shove all the patching into a yeah little content the B thing. Patch. Yeah, yeah, the and, B patches are great. I never really got good at the B patching, but yeah, mine was just a big mess, but it mm. worked. That's it was a, really brute brute force kind mm. of <laughs> really not very elegant. And now I see people who are doing stuff with Java and. There's a thing that I tell people about that, man, it's one of the most beautiful bits of Max. And it, but in fairness, it's mostly Java, but it's called Cordimist. Hmm. Uh, it's an I saw it on, um, you know, Peter Kern's CDM. Yeah. And watched the video and thought, yep, that's amazing. That is proper. And when you just, it's so elegantly done. It's by a Korean guy. And uh, wow. How are you spelling that? Cord. Called Imist. 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 Yes, they're called Imist. It's quite. People have a hard time finding it. I'm not sure Here if you go. can. There it is. It's really good. I mean, I highly, 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 highly recommend you get this, guys. It's, uh, oh, and you know what? I've done with the modular, I've spilt it out using the Hermod and using other, you know, MIDI to CV poly converters. The poly and and I've got the poly from you know polyend and the Hermod, and sending 
the MIDI from this guy into the Euro rack is really, really sweet. Mm. It's it's kind of it will it will play essentially. It's like um, you know Cthulhu and stuff. It's like the one finger yeah. chord thing, but it's a much more elegant solution. It has like staggers between, so you can splay the chords out, varying mm. delay amounts. Has a really powerful kind of expansion of the chord. You can do inversions, similar chords. Like it's just a really comprehensive and, but at the same time, really elegant. Mm. Highly recommended. Yeah, nice. Uh, the yeah. Uh, the harmony from Instrual is really elegantly done in that it's a single channel but four outputs, so a one into four out chord harmony generator. But Jason really went in and made. Uh, musical and interesting decision for what happens if you want to allow notes in between the scales for say chromatic runs mm, pass, mm-hmm, passing because mm-hmm. you don't get that you say yeah, yeah. keep it c major to be simple if you want to go quite locked yeah, yeah a b flat b c you can go up in semitones it won't happen on a most because <laughs> yeah, yeah. the note b flat isn't active whereas jazz kind of... what you getting some fucking jazz <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is stay. I know it's true. That's <laughs> nice. That he's basically added a uh, jazz. I've seen him play guitar. It makes sense because mm. he's quite, um, you know, he's quite deft with the old axe. Mm. So I'm sure that as he was playing, just his musicianship was like, no, I feel trapped. Mm. Chordal traps. Deft with the old axe. That's a great saying. Uh, <laughs> you just play the same note. Twice, you said play the same wrong note twice and it's right, right? That's that's literally it. Oh. I, Listen, I you know, San Ra, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people Look, say, that was oh, my jazz, technique. That's all jazz is, just, just repeat it and make it sound like it's intentional. It's like, I think there's a little bit more to it than that, historically, but let, let's go with yeah. that for now. <laughs> I like San Ra, though. It's basically his thing in the ensemble was that no one can play a wrong note. It's only when the rest of the band doesn't support them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah. a group. A group wrongness in a way yeah so yeah no there's there's a lot to it but um yeah that's cool i've got yeah i mean man i don't need any more shit <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, I was actually kind of upset with myself the other night because i have i just did get his how do you pronounce it the L- lubadow L- luba like luba 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 like luba luba uh, oh it's the luba the worst one uh, is the but, squid salalampo the salampo uh, yeah. Uh, I see getting rid of the squid sample. I just call it squid sample. They're just they're only getting phonetic with it. But I know what you mean. It's um, <laughs> they're they're getting. A, is he from London or something? That guy. Well, it's Matthew said to me from ALM that imagine a, a good French dish. You're in a good French restaurant. A sample, <laughs> sample. But then he also. So he actually wanted to say sample. Well, being said, I said right. Well, I'm just going to say something <laughs> stupid in the demo, and I think I went with sample. <laughs> I um, loved it. Yeah, then, that was a great demo, by the way. Oh, thank you. I mean, Ben, just straight off the bat, you are a large part of the reason I'm into this. So you know, thanks and thanks and thanks. The two thanks. <laughs> the two <two-tone laughs> thanks. I, I definitely, last night I had this sort of bad thanks. I was like, oh god, like what? Why? I mean, this doesn't <laughs> achieve anything. I can't achieve in another way. So much in such a simple way and now i'm just making my life complicated for the sake of it kind of can scratch the worst part of my uh my itch if you know what i'm saying mm. like i have an ocd's like kind of collector's gas problem and you know this is not helping but at the same time i have made some stuff with it that is i mean my inspiration for making music with modular was Raymond Scott and should still be Raymond Scott because I just, I mean, I just think he's, his music is still like absolutely captivating and the melodic competence and the whole arrangement aesthetic that came from his background infused with the electronics is just a tantalizing combination. And I just, never want my modular music to be stuck in a little loop or do you know what i'm saying i want mm. it to feel like it's expansive and it's it's kind of it, and i tap into that algorithmic composition thing that i was starting down that road in max msp but i could never achieve it and i didn't like doing it inside a computer but i think uh if i can write it all down on paper and start to dream it up which i'm now starting to be able to do because i understand how 
the signal flow is around the modular, I yeah. can sort of get a little bit of, yeah, a proximity to mm. that world. And that's where I like to be. Yeah. Basically, I like to be in a world of heavy planning where I'm like, I'm not going to turn this thing on and just patch willy nilly. Although I think that is useful from time to yeah, time. Yeah, I think it? so. But anyway, I'm going, I'm just rambling. No, Do no, all me. good. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll take a jump back and just kind of address that I am somewhat watching the live chat. Not oh, as good. much yes. as I could in the uh, Super Booth streams where I was chief of the live chat alongside uh, Heimbach and Constantine for those yeah, special reserve nice. streams. But yeah, massively active, lovely live chat. If there's been any questions, I've missed them. Um, and I'll be completely truthful. I'm not going to spend this time right now with Jamie going right back through the questions. If you do have questions, oh, type at DivKid and I'll see it. Um, there's just a little bit too much now to go right back through the whole live chat live. It's in the uh, corner of the screen. So if you put at DivKid, it kind of highlights the comment for me. Um, we did have one question I did catch that I think I have since lost. Can I make myself a touch louder? Yes, I did. I think that's fine. Uh, that was it from Quantum Space. Just to ring back, um, do people need to understand Max MSP for the Cardamist? No, it just runs in Max for Life, which I believe is built into Live Suite. I'm not quite sure the versions of Live anymore. Yeah, but I think, I think, it's think in the you suite. just you just get it by default now because Ableton bought Cycling, didn't they? So it's in integrated. So, yeah, you don't have to do anything. You just have to pay the nice gentleman who worked his ass off on that thing because it is a staggering amount of work. I can only imagine the hours that went in. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so worth it. Yeah. Couple of we do have a couple of questions. Uh, Metahedron, what was your first module? Maybe a good place to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, I had a few people help me out in the beginning. Jimmy Edgar who I've known since the, you know, beginning of his career, really. And, uh, you know, I was, we, we started out and I was on Warp Records for 14 years and uh, used to tour with a bunch of electronic bods, uh, you know, Mark Bell, um, Luke Viber and Richard Devine. And, yeah, and also, you know, a bit of Jimmy Edgar. We were on tour together and he has always been, like, one of my modular inspirations because – he always coaxes out a lot of that Detroit funk. Mm. He doesn't sort of get into the chaotic world of um, noise, which is cool, but it's definitely not my lane, really. Uh, so, yeah, Jimmy kind of was kind of one of my gurus, if you like. So I asked him, like, what was good? And he said, Surge stuff is better than the rest of the stuff I have. I just like, but he has, like, original surge banana mm. setup uh so i did I, I got a bunch of random source stuff um for eurorack thinking that would be a good starting point i got three ntos and and like you know i just kind of went in for a big order and just mm. went in and got like a, you know universal slope and like a a few other a comparator that i never use which mm. I should use. Now I've got a bit more advanced knowledge or a little bit more knowledge. I could probably enjoy that one. Mm. But, um, yeah, I just got a bunch of those. The uh, the filter that they make as well, the the, the variable Q, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah. Variable Q. Uh, uh, variable Q, and I got the wave um, multiplier. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that was it, really. That's that's how I began. And, I, and then I did, I get some kind of um, general purpose VCAs. I made kind of a big purchase, essentially. I filled a seven new case in like one go. Mm. Just went And in. then, yeah, because so I, I just sort of modular gridded it out and thought, okay, if I'm going to get into this, I need a functional system. I'm going to need VCAs. So I got like a, you know, one of those uh, just quad VCAs. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the IntelliGel. And I've been quite a fascist with the VCAs. I'm quite... I'm un underwhelmed with a lot of VCAs. <laughs> the only yeah. VCA that I like currently is my L1. Uh, okay. I don't really particularly like the IntelliJ VCA. Uh, just what feel reason like it's do you little... think? Is it a, a sound thing? Is it a response? Yeah, is it a... it's a sound thing. Mm. I don't like... Um, I'm concerned about just the way 
the gain staging works in uh, the VCA itself because I just feel like, especially with a ni a subtle signal that might come out of NTOs or whatever, mm. I think you guys got to be careful the way you you handle that. Otherwise, it can just get really, yeah, I'm just, and yeah. I mean, they. Uh, but then again, their aggressive character can be totally useful for other things. So yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna like I'm not talking smack about that the VCA. It's good. But I just like the L1 because I just feel like what I put in and what I expect to get out when I put an envelope in is kind of what I get out of it. Mm. And I like it. It's the, it's the mixer one. So you've mm. got like just pot control, which which is just really handy. And I like interacting with that kind of thing. I, I, I know it's a sort of a Schwayman. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, I think Inspired Schwayman, module, right? Yeah, and then uh, L1, we're using the that THAT COP yeah, VCA chips right. that were cleaner and they sound yeah. great. Yeah, but you're totally right. We I think a lot of people chase that bit of saturation, you know, beefiness, warm drive and all that kind of thing. It's important sometimes to realise that it's not always right. Actually the yeah. cleanest, simplest thing is sometimes better than the yeah, colour and the saturation and I like it to be predictable and reliable so I can kind of lean on it at the say the end of a stage. So like I might be like wanting to color and do stuff and then at the end I might want to just do level control and you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah. at that point I don't want it to feel like it can't take it and give me headroom yeah. and so anyway, that's been a good module. I've been enjoying that and it wasn't expensive. So yeah, actually I spoke to Anthony uh, Valdino. Mm. So, of, uh, so yeah, Valdini and he, uh, he, he helped me out make that choice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Anthony Baldino. Yeah, sorry, mm. Baldini for a minute there. It's uh, but he's been fantastic. Do you know him, Ben? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I think very briefly said hello, but aware of his music and his output, really kill him off a gene reel. Um, that I made yeah. some music with some nice kind of source material to really dig into. Yeah, I really met cool. him with Richard Devine at uh, this year's NAM because uh, him and Richard are tight. So, and I've known Richard for. Yonks. <laughs> but funny, my early memories of Richard were like on the, we were on a warp magic bus tour of the US. Mm. It was me and like Mark Bell and like uh, Prefuse and yeah, Richard and Luke Viber and a bunch of nutters, Nightmares on Wax. Good tour. Mm. And uh, it was 2002. <laughs> so it just generally ages us. But then Richard was like always a straight edge one. Never yeah. getting mashed up or whatever. <laughs> he was so straight edge. And uh, he was just fixing everyone's laptops. Everyone on the bus <laughs> would be support. like dossers, just like, and he was like, what, who's got problems? And he'll just be in the back, like, it's optimized. Just amazing. Just like, just so, so smart. The guy. Uh, yeah. I don't know how Richard does it. I just I look at his life and think, how, how, how does the day work for Richard? How does he, you know what I mean? As you do a sound pack for, you know, Google's VR, like the highest level sound design. And then next minute he's got, you know, a sound pack for like quite an obscure granular synth, mm. you know, completely made. It's just like unfathomable amount of work. And then you'll see his night patch and it's like this <laughs> phenomenal, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, how? I just don't know how Richard does it. Yeah. Seeing he's an otherworldly character. Mm. Seeing him patch my system was ah, strange it was um, cool. it was in huddersfield around an hour from where i am in bradford and it was a are you still near huddersfield it's like yeah why um i've got a free day and i'm in huddersfield and after i got over the, the hell's richard divine doing in huddersfield yeah, <laughs> when was it, in that weird sound room with yeah like it was with a the university they do some really cool stuff uh, we host the yeah. modular meet there in february usually each year and that's uh, cool it ended up with a day that he didn't think would be free um, having already had the Saturday afternoon in the anechoic chamber and in, underneath a speaker dome of 20 to 30 speakers. Yeah, I think. he mentioned that to me. You know, but I interviewed him for the pod, uh, hanging out with mm. audiophiles. Yeah, yeah, no, man, that's awesome. What, so hang on a minute. What, when, why did he sort of take, look at look, your system and sort of think for a minute and then go in? Yeah, well, what, before that, there, there's an old uh, Renaissance medieval music shop 
we went to, you know grabbed coffee and lunch and then came back to mine for a few hours um all, and just just the kind of fascination from both of us a really cool cool spot you just want to go in there with a with a nice That's recorder amazing. and sample the hell out of the place but i need wow. to strike up a relationship with them um, definitely but yeah, just super quick. I mean, he was testing a module of mine that will be out in about a month. Um, oh, and that was wow. really eye-opening, just kind of how quick he is. At, what's it like responding to this and making decisions and his ear for this thing and just patching in and out. But also just seeing anyone. I, I mean, yeah. Richard's an amazing talent, but just seeing someone else patch your own system in your space. I'm sure most people watching this haven't had that. I mean, how many? I know. That's so cool. Do people come over and patch yours, or if you're working with non-modular musicians, yeah. are they kind of curious about it? Do they have a turn, or is it off-putting for anyone ever? Not necessarily off-putting. It has been. I think it's been off-putting since we've been. I don't know off-putting is maybe a bit strong, but I think a bit maybe, of a distraction. Yeah, I mean, it, it, sometimes when people come to the house who are not musicians and they see it, they kind of get a worried look, like, "What the hell is that?" Yeah, you know, like this guy is in trouble. <laughs> you know, <they're, laughs> but um, yeah, other musicians, I I must admit, in co-writes and stuff, I I haven't quite had the confidence to like crack it out, which is a shame. I did it once, and it worked fine. But we did really basic stuff that I essentially could have done in the computer. So, uh, but I do have a couple of people here that will kind of go in. There's this guy, Aaron Harmon, that uh, used to be in a band here called Bass Camp. Really mm. talented, great guy. And uh, he, he's into modular. So he's like kind of one of my modular hangs here. And yeah, we get some good nights just kind of like patching his stuff into mine. And yeah, it, it's great just to have someone that speaks the language really mm. that you can and also just having him around i notice i think differently like i'm all of a sudden on the spot and i'm like oh i feel compelled to make a patch that maybe had i been on my own i just wouldn't have done it you know yeah so it's definitely friends are good mm. <laughs> i would like to head over too there's loads of questions and for those asking yes, questions in the chat questions. um I am taking note. I'm kind of pulling them out into a text file and I'll drop them in as appropriate. I will keep good taking man. question breaks. But I did promise the good people over on Patreon that do support me that we'd ask their questions first in case they couldn't nice. make the stream. Um, so on that note, uh, we'll start with Leston's question. Um, huge fan. He wants to talk about the concept of programming and modular, just saying that in his personal journey, the modular became an extension of programming sort of the same as uh, logic but outside of the box um he says he knows you did a lot with max and reactor and that being the center of your live setup how do you feel about kind of programming i guess digital modules maybe the eafrio one in your rack do you get into that mindset mm. with the modular i hadn't used the 301 at all until i went to go and record with dave c tech who's a fantastic uh, producer amazing musician used to be in TV on the radio and it's done a lot of amazing projects. And uh, he took me out. He invited me to come to the Sonic Ranch a while ago. And it was like two weeks essentially in isolation. This place is in the middle of Tornillo, Texas. There's nothing around, mm. like literally nothing around. And yet you're in world-class recording facilities. I had my own entire studio with a massive API console, all these mics, just all this incredible stuff. Ursa Major, I had an AMS, a bunch of beautiful stuff. And I sat in that room with the ER301 and I just learnt it. Mm. And, I, and I made a pretty decent looper in it, actually. N not at all bad. Uh, it, and it was quite relaxing to not have a computer, although I used, I used a computer actually to uh, send it messages to yeah. sort of essentially so I could use a keyboard and I translated the MIDI a little bit with 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 Max but aside from that the uh, 301 was doing like the heavy lifting and it was really competent and I started to get into the granular stuff on it and was impressed it's mm -hmm. a little bit hissy but it's it, it is good I mean uh I like it I think it's a uh, it's just time yeah, it's just so much time that, that the, it demands that you really um, give it time. And if you do, it does reward you. And I like the I mean, the guy is a real smart mm. character. I love the 
way he's done it. It's it's fun to interact with once you get your head around the little bit of the steep learning curve. The programming is great. And I think if I were to take this stuff out live, I'd be really happy that I had it in the live rig. Yeah. Because even though it's a pricey piece and a bit of a beast to take out, I don't know, it uh, feels a bit delicate, but um, it's it's really capable. Yeah. So, yeah, highly recommend it. If you're into that mindset in general, it's it's pretty great. I mean, yeah, <laughs> very flexible. Obviously, anyone who knows it is aware of its powers. I mean, I always think that if you go and follow Scott Campbell, yeah. If you don't follow Scott Campbell already, he's such an inspiring guy because he doesn't do something totally like insane. He's always chasing a good sound, you know? And I think the fact that he uses a 301 in such a tasteful way and gets out really quite like haunting, evocative stuff out of it just shows you that it's, um, it's really good at m manipulating and handling sample material better than anything else I have in the Eurorack currently. Uh, it's definitely the best way to visualize a long sample and the granular stuff is really pretty great so yeah mm. i know richard's been playing with it for a long time yeah. thinking mostly for granular he told me yeah i think so, so. it makes sense um on that kind of note is there anything else program wise have you looked at any of the kind of mono type devices anything else on that front mm -hmm. in modular uh, that's probably enough for me because I have the circle on as well. And you know, that's heady. Mm. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, menu diving stuff. I, I'll be honest. I'm not. Yeah. Maybe I just not the format really, for it for you. Yeah. I, I, it, what was great about the, the Sonic ranches. I took a very small, pod it took one of those 4ms 60 hp pods mm. and that was it that's all i had so i i had the hermod and i had the 301 very much scott campbell inspired setup and it was really that was it yeah so with those two pieces i kind of got I got stuck in and um that was fantastic <laughs> and i think at that point it's like it really behaves really nicely in a small setup yeah that's how I try and get a lot. learn new modules to have a, a skiff case that has yeah. one of most functions in there that mixes yeah, yeah, VCAs, yeah. some basic sequencing or MIDI to CV or whatever, totally. and then take the thing out. If it's an oscillator, it's right. How does it perform amongst this group of things I know very, very well? And it kind of yeah. fast tracks that. I'm not going to play on the oh, big man. system, yeah. which is where the videos end up being done, and I can patch up into mm. a corner and pull long cables oh, around. And just that's cool. Is that really how you do it? Just how you get to grips into with a it? case like right. I need to. Truth be told, there's just not time. I mean, the in-depth yeah. demo yeah. thing. There's still a good few days, long, long days working them. Uh, some of them of like a week, but it's like. Okay. There's no time or budget, you know. I'm very open, and because yeah. I get asked a lot, is this what you're doing most of the time? And that's how I feed the family is doing these demos. And it's like I'd yeah. love to have two, three weeks just to learn something and indulge and try and find my own kind of artistic route through it. But it's like I don't have time to do that. That kind of comes after, you know. The things that really speak to me will will come back yeah. to the front, and I'll do that. But the the, the demos job. And it's why I like doing the demos is to just present it how it is. I think the the large mm -hmm. amount of the audience are intelligent, tuned on, interesting people that are very engaged in the scene and the sound and what's going on and let them yeah. decide. I don't have to find exactly where I would use it first. You know, my kind of, is that the right thing for me um, angle? Um Hello, we can see the system, which we'll come to in a second. But yeah, I'm just going to like show it for a laugh. There you go. No, we can throw yeah. some pictures up in a second. <laughs> um, we'll blast through these Patreon questions because we can yeah. both yeah, of yeah. us can sidestep. I in, know we can ramble in, in, in every that, direction. Right. <laughs> um, Omri Cohen. Next question was, how do you approach similar to what I was just talking about? Actually, uh, next question is, how do you approach learning or experimenting with a new module? Do you directly incorporate it into a setup? Do you read a manual? Do you have a separate kind of sound design session with it? Um, and also, yeah. at which point do you say to yourself, this module isn't for me as a side question? Yeah. So yeah, you get a that new did, module. Yeah. What do you do? How do you kind of, yeah. It's a good question. I mean, it did happen to me with a Luba. 
I mean, that, uh, that was my night yesterday was trying to get to grips with that. And I watched, he was kind enough, Jason, to upload a great video overview of the unit. And it's entertaining to watch him go through it because he's pretty comprehensive with it. Yeah. And uh, so that was that was good. I mean, and it's also a little bit more of a beast of a unit than I thought it was. Actually, I got, to, I mean, I'd seen it around. It was actually Eamon Tobin who'd written to me saying, have you, have you seen this? I've been lusting after one of these. And I was like, oh, man. I hadn't really thought I might go for it, but it really is right up my alley because I just love anything loop <laughs> and uh, anything delay. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, a good good example of how do I get to grips with it. I was essentially pretty tired last night and just trying to make it sound compelling to me and try different sources into it. I tried just pure tones and then like, you know, some drum sounds from, you know, the assimilator because they can just, so I don't need a VCA set up. I can just like tap the buttons on the assimilator and send bits into it and see how it responds. And, you know, and yeah, I'll, 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 I'll kind of get a sense for it. Usually a, a piece, even if I don't get completely comfortable with it, if I think, oh, the sound of this is compelling, mm. I mean, if it does make sound, then I'll think, okay, I'm keeping it because of that alone. In the case of something more like a system or control, like the variegate and the voltage block I started with, but I've since... Um, I've kind of I've not really got along with them so they they won't be in my system I don't think anymore mm. for example and it was just more just because I just wanted I didn't I found it hard to escape the loop with that world and I didn't want to make loops you know what I mean yeah so I want my I, so those things are just a little bit more tricky for me to think of my music in an expansive way so I thought okay that's why the circle on came into play the circle on is essentially connected to the computer using an Acme clock. Okay. Uh, and the Acme clock streams four different kinds of clocks. It, can, it, it streams to, yeah, essentially the circle on on the one hand. And obviously, it's not great to use the circle on as a kind of a, a slave. No, uh, it seems more like a kind of master device that you would fan out of. You know, but it actually system. behaves very, very well mm. when it is locked. Um, I was really shocked. And it, it drives um, a DMUX to give me 16 gates. And also I've got the uh, CVIO, which, you know, takes care of a lot of that as well. And I've got my Profit plugged into it, Profit 5, Jupiter 4, and an OBXA. Very and nice. a mini And a Mini Moog, like, all into the circle on. <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> like... It's a beautiful thing. I can sequence yeah. the whole studio from this box, and it's not, and the fact that it's right there and it kind of size-wise fits in with my. I mean, I'm not sure. I have, I love my seven U like performance case setup. It's kind of how I started because I actually thought I'd probably call it a day at seven U. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? How it always happens. And so now I'm in this kind of little bit of a circle of equipment. It's uh, it's fitting in ergonomically quite well. So a lot of that has become a big concern for me. It's like the ergonomics. Like I have the 301 directly to the left of it all because I know that it's going to need a lot of attention. Yeah. So it all of those units are very close to me. Mm. Uh, and that's got the like the... I'm getting into the rig here, but I suppose yeah. it's maybe... It's kind of answer to the time? question. Yeah, well, one, we've just one more Patreon question before yeah. we kind of dive in. Again, people watching live, I am pulling questions out if you want to keep asking. Uh, tag me if you Good want man, me to, ben, to you're see amazing it. At this. But uh, Lars asked a couple of questions. How do you start a new track? I guess they mean generally, not just modular. Is it melody first, then harmonies, or vice versa, or lyrics? Uh, let's start there. How do you start a new track? Big question with a lot of potential a answers, like, answers, I guess. Yeah, I mean, essentially, weirdly enough, even though I'm surrounded by keyboards, you know, you can see a few in this shot. There's a Mellotron, the Mini, and the a piano, and you can see the stack of polys over there. That's the OBX and the, the Prophet and the, uh, the Jupiter 4 or whatever. Uh, I don't really play keyboards. <laughs> I mean, I play <laughs> in a pretty rudimentary style. Mm. So really, first and foremost, I think... I can express myself with my voice and yeah. that's kind of how I've done things. 
So there'll be often times when I'll, I'll, I'll essentially lay down as much as I can using my voice. And that can be drums and, and bass and what I imagine the song to be like. Uh, but that would be a generalization because there's so many times now when I'm making tracks that I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take an inspiration from, <laughs> yeah, a sound. Yeah. Half the time a mood can be enough, mm-hmm. you know, just like I, I'm, I'm, I, I think because I've been making sound for quite a while, I need a certain kind of color on the mood to really spark my imagination if I'm going to be in a certain headspace. So I look for a really good sound. Yeah. Often, and I, I, I need to, that I can swim in that I feel like has legs. And then sometimes just hearing that sound will make me think of something. Yeah. Uh, it will just take me to almost like a place in my mind and then I'll be able to dream. So I think having something that you can dream with, that's an important part for me. Mm. I think I've lost my other cam, which is a bit unfortunate. Oh. Get run out of batteries. Uh, it's okay. I've got the pictures yeah. you yeah. sent. Yeah. Um, there were a couple more questions from Lars. Um, again, generally speaking, um, not, know, not specifically about modular, but they say soul is yeah. very present in your music. Is that a childhood influence? The, the influence of yeah. soul, is that a childhood thing? Well, childhood, I suppose it really, it was, it's funny actually. I sometimes think of this, oh, when did I come across all that? I mean, my mum, um, like the areas that I would have received music as a child, there wasn't a lot of soul in that. Mm. I mean, there was a, I mean, the radio was there. Motown made it over to mainstream radio. Look, I mean, the Barry Gordy's to his credit, he made that music massive. Mm. It reached my ears. And obviously I grew up in the era of, of, of MJ and then later Prince. So it was really like hearing those things on the radio, to be honest. And I was just always gravitated more towards that kind of vocal, I suppose. But yeah, I was paying attention to pop radio, really. And, uh, and, and thankfully at the time in the eighties in the early eighties, when I, when I was kind of getting into it, there was some pretty good stuff actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess some people would argue that's not true, but, uh, I basically became massively obsessed with Prince and then from the world of Prince, it kind of opened up Sly Stone and Funkadelic and all of the other stuff. Yeah. And then once I discovered George Clinton and, you know, it just, it all unraveled thanks to Prince really. Yeah. So there you go. My sister, really, being five years older than me, had all the records, and that's how I got to hear Prince. So we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things, but she, she might have, uh, she might have been the responsible one for bringing the soul out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Final uh, patron question before we kind of yeah. dive right into the rig. Um, and again, from Lars, uh, until what stage of the production process do you do it yourself? Are you mixing everything and mastering? Or are you kind of handing that off? at a certain stage depends on what it is like uh i usually i didn't mix multiply or gym mm-hmm. but uh i did mix to an extent compass and building a beginning that's my kind of more formal releases and then uh i mix them with a friend of mine called jake aaron the last ones and I, i'm kind of like I know what I'm doing in the mix world, but I think it's probably more useful to, if you can, get another set of ears on it that's more impartial. I think just the proximity to the material can actually hinder your ability to make drastic changes that might be needed to elevate the material, you know what I mean? It's that brutalness some, sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, I remember. you can do it, but it's not a question of can you do it, you know, technically and stuff. It's a question of can you be bold enough to destroy some of the things you spent a long time making. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that willingness to just either be brutal with EQ sometimes yeah. or just strip parts out or that's right. That's it. I saw it just the other day. It might've even been a uh, Ricky Tinez. If, if not, yeah, it was just someone saying you labor over this part and you end up using it for <laughs> yeah, like yeah. four to eight bars. That's the only bit oh, it no, works. I the know. rest is muted. Of course. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's it sometimes, you know, and you just, yep. I, I certainly I won't can't master be, uh... though. I won't master. Although I have got kind of something akin to a mastering rack set up now, and uh, it's kind of been fun. Mm. 
But with the mastering, I think one thing that I really like doing, even if I have to be involved through the whole stage, is just getting into a different space. It's one thing to check yeah, on different speakers yeah. and headphones, but I remember making techno on a PA system where, where with the band kind of electronic pop, electro pop kind of thing used to uh, rehearse. And, you know, you bring it home, and it doesn't sound right. It's like, well, of course it sounds good in the room that we made it on because that's where we made it. <laughs> like, we wouldn't actively make it sound bad. <laughs> and you went back yeah. in, and, you know, a PA system's not what you want to be producing on, but it was a good reference point. But getting out of the space is super, oh, super valuable. Um, so useful. But, yeah. And I'm just going to... Let me just grab this camera, and I'm going to give a little charge whilst we're chatting. You know what I mean? It might give a little juice. Yeah. You know, just for fun. We'll see. Oh, yeah. I'll be here. I'm here. <laughs> well, I'll bring up the picture of the rig. I, I am still taking yeah. questions, but uh, let's let's get into cool. the rig and we'll come on to those. Yeah, man. Maybe start with this left hand um, case. So you've a ton top left on that case, a ton of Circlon IO. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, yeah. Is that? That's basically yeah. You get your. Sorry, what was the question? I was just going to say, is that really the kind of driving force of the the whole rig? Is it involved in every patch the Circlon? No. Uh, I think it uh, it would be good if it was. <laughs> I mean, I just uh, yeah. I mean, I've invested a lot of time and energy into it, so I feel like uh, I just need more time and energy <laughs> to make a patch that kind of justifies having all of that stuff. I suppose. Uh, yeah, I mean, you'll see that essentially on that case, I've kind of got more of a percussion-heavy setup. We've got this grid sample and the simulator, and then a bunch of those T network stuff. They're mm. they're just new additions going to try them out and the Basimilus and uh, I've got that little um, you know it's a sort of syncussion emulation yeah Japanese one I can't remember who makes that it's not the Michigan um, synth works it's another one yeah and then then you know sample drum so it's kind of like it's my little drum area yeah essentially so obviously with all of the gate triggers coming out of the circle and just being spat out, one of the things I like about the circle is DMUX thing, which is the third like kind of uh, module to the top left there. It's just a you know gray bunch of just jacks. <laughs> the one without the D sub connector on it. Mm. Um, that essentially, what's nice about that is in the circle on when you set it up, with a MIDI keyboard, so I control this with like the little mini move to my right, and um, it sets out all of your gates just on the keys chromatically, or however you want them set on a MIDI keyboard. So I can like play drums, essentially, just from a little octave of a keyboard, a bit like you might do in Ableton, yeah. or you know what I mean? But it's just sending out the correct gates all the time. Just that alone has been super handy for just kind of making music. Yeah. Just because it's sort of, it kind of, then that will unify the mindset for plugging in stuff. So I can just go, I'm just going to put this into the first state of the assimilator and bam, I'm going. I can just play all the sounds on the keyboard. I don't have to mess around. I don't have to, any more configuration than that. And it's actually, in that case, it makes it quick because, you know, there are some stumbling blocks. I, I have the Eloquence as well. I can't fit it in right now. Um, mm. With a new firmware upgrade, it's really quite great. And, um, but yeah, this whole side, and obviously you you encouraged me to get the muck slicer with your video on it, <laughs> and I think what a fantastic piece of equipment that is. Yeah, I'll pull uh, an image up I, for that one, because we did get a question just saying, how are you using it? Uh, the question was, interested to hear thoughts on the muck slicer, is Jamie primarily using it as a sequencer, a switch, or a modulation source, or all of the above? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm again the amount to be quite honest the amount of time and energy that i've had to really delve into the the limits of it is, i mean i most i try to avoid using it as an audio switcher just because it's a clicky affair mm. but uh i do you know this is fine i don't mind clicks but um it, i mean it, it is capable in that way i really like it as as um as a way to send like just gate messages, CV messages out to, even to the assimilator. The other day I did something with that guy I was telling you about, Aaron Harmon. Mm. Uh, we were sending out just gates and it was just spraying them out onto all the different <laughs> inputs of the assimilator. And it was just this really machine. It was just so aggro somehow. It just felt amazing. It was just, it was just moving 
all of the gate information around in such a simple way. And I was just like, there you go. And it, the way that it was timing versus the speed of the gates was sort of weirdly offset. I think it was just a, a non clocked source that was scanning the CV through the, through the slices. And it was just making pretty compelling stuff straight away. So yeah, I just like anything that's doing that. I guess what would you call that? Multiplexing. Mm. So there's some kind of, uh, and, and then, yeah, it's a great unit, really, really, really powerful. I love the CV addressable uh, aspect of it because I do have a lot of sequential switches. I yeah. mean, you know, you and Milo have been like massive influence. So like I, once I discovered the sequential switch, I was like, oh, you have to have sequential switches. It's amazing. So I've got three of those. But then once this came along, I was like, this was, this is a lot more potent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just having the CV addressable um control is 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 great so yeah yeah i do when i get around to using it i always have a great time with it <laughs> it does take me a, he a little minute to get my head yeah. around it and again it's one of those modules that's so sort of powerful i mean the qcd next to it is a wonderful thing obviously anyone who knows that it's just incredible that thing <laughs> i just love that thing so much it's uh qcd is essential that. I think most people will know it, the clock, yeah, quad course. clock distributor. I was going to say yeah, divider, but so, it does... so handy. It does divide so and molt, doesn't it? It does both. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's just so good. I mean, there's a unit that you'd plug it in, and then and it's just going, and it's like no brain required to use it, which is fantastic. It's quite relaxing in a system. So is this... <laughs> there is a part of me that thinks I would like to remove everything with a menu and just have a modular system that was really synth-based. Mm. That was just like, you know, I guess, yeah, more stevio, I guess, for my web, mm. you know, more stevio. Kind of that kind of vibe. Very, I, I, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stevio is very, very modular in that it's, yeah, it's you know, a, a divider changes something and then logic modules let it downstream. It's that cascading, yeah. like one trickle downstream, you know, fans Fair. out. Super modular. With the QCD, is that more about you getting clocks onto the right rates for different things or do you tend to modulate it a lot itself? Yeah. The modulation of it is the key. I'm not so bothered about the hard divides, even though that is functionally really useful as well. But um, yeah, CV control over the divide and multiply is just, you know, it's instant. <laughs> it's instant fun. Yeah. You know, it's just, that's great. Because then you can just start to, especially with something like a Circon, because you can program quite precise timed CV moments to, uh, to change stuff up. Mm. And it just becomes like a really quick way and a really fun way of just sort of doing all of that stuff. So yeah, really, really useful. I mean, I'm, uh, yeah. I mean, any other questions about that side? Yeah. I mean, well, I, I'm gonna, I enjoyed. Yeah. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Let's uh, all right. let's let's pick some modules out. So, sample drum. Let, let's yeah. let's give that shine some light on the Erica sample drum. Is that heavy CV manipulation? Is it mainly a kind of one shot? player for you are you making use of the effects does it really fit i'll be honest I, I don't use it okay yeah i don't use it it's a shame not that it's bad i uh yeah i tend to gravitate towards the simulator and the squid yeah and i sort of maybe overdid it getting another one uh so i'm not sure that i'll keep it it's not because it's bad it's just i've got the others and the simulator is just such a beast as you know yeah, it's just uh, it's hard to compete with the simulator, really. And it's just finding yourself in that. I've I've had comments before where someone might say, "Oh, I noticed that you took module X out of the rig. Is it not very good?" And it's like, "Yeah, it's great what it does. Oh, man, I maybe amazing. just don't yeah. want that flavor that day. It's like you don't yeah, always yeah. want a coat when you go outside. Sometimes you do, <laughs> but it's also yeah. been more of kind of nittier about it than that. The you know thinking of like filter flavors and things like that. It's like you don't yeah. always want." a Moog style low pass you don't always yeah. want like the saturation of a sem so it's kind of it just it's flavors and nothing yeah. wrong with yeah. any of these things it's just we all find ourselves and different different projects lend themselves into yeah, that yeah I'm, and in, in inherently menu diving is part of using these samplers yeah i mean less so with the squid but um you know so essentially the sample drums demanding learning of its ways so is the assimilator and with the amount of hours that you have I find like 
that's what makes me think. I know the assimilator. I'll, I'll probably stick with that for now. And uh, but you know, but uh, the sample drum is actually really intuitive when you get to it. It's a really great sounding unit. It's it's, it's great. I highly recommend it actually if you're into that kind of thing. Mm. We've also got a little bit of the kind of pattern generation. I'm curious how this fits your workflow. Maybe starting with Euclidean circles. Love it. Yeah, fantastic. Just instantly musical. Does the job. Beautiful. Just, yeah, just beautiful. Once I saw that, I love Raymond Scott. Raymond Scott's rhythm generators was the circle generator. That's how he made his rhythms. So uh, it's really appealing to see and to have that way of getting involved with rhythms. Yeah, I, I just love that whole concept of rhythm in a circle. And uh, once I, yeah, once I got hip to that thing, I was like all about it. Yeah, mm. I'd, I'd go straight to the Euclidean circles like every time actually. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it might, I, I mean, just to get a vibe, you know, yeah, just to get me just to it, almost uh, just to audition sounds just so I don't have to set up a sequence, you know, so I can just kind of go, what are my sound palette going to be here? So that you get just, you're firing off rhythmic gates that just have a bit of a funk <laughs> mm. and, you know, what's nice about something like the, the, you know, the QCD with its expander. It's like it can delay and shuffle those a little bit. So you can easily like move a layer against another layer kind of. So uh, they actually go really well together, hence their proximity to each other. So, yeah, I kind of, I love that thing. I lean on it a lot. Yeah, it's excellent. I, I still yeah, hammer really the, the V1 all the time. <laughs> so good. Um, and funnily, yeah. uh, Vlad that makes it from VPME is in the chat and says to please say thanks. Well, Thanks to Vlad for making it. <laughs> wow, amazing, yeah, man. It's, it's just a um, stellar thing. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I've got three of your precision adders too, man. <laughs> yeah. I love those things. Likewise. Uh, we'll, come, oh, we'll, we'll come on to those. I have a lot of high praise yeah. for those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so a couple of other questions generally for where we are at the minute. Someone asked, I didn't catch the name, what does the squid salampole have compared to the assimilator? It's got quite a sort of aggressive tone. Yeah. It's got a lot more of a fighting tone. So if I used, to, I grew up, my first sample was the S950, which I guess now is quite a cult classic because mm -hmm. it's just the only sample I could afford at the time. And it happened to be like a, a sick sampler and like it, the squid has more of that vibe going for it than the assimilator does. Yeah. Simulator is very clean. Super high I mean, quality. Even, yeah, it's staggering mm. and the trigger speed i mean the whole thing is just a master stroke of engineering I and mean, obviously it's dave ross and he's the, one of the best ever uh, but the squid sample is no i love the the last three channels with the pots i mean it's so aggro i mean <laughs> the bass that comes out of the like just tuning toms with those knobs is it's a real rush mm. it's a, it can give you a real like head rush that thing <laughs> i think i like i really it's a great more aggressive sampler yeah yeah super super good good compliment to the simulator they sound really different yeah yeah very much so yeah i, I don't Once imagine many outside of uh, the pair of us and another handful are kind of so heavy on multi-channel samplers potentially but they do very much work well together as you say the oh, yeah. difference in pitch shift is huge oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and there's yeah. definite the simulator range is huge as well i mean yeah yeah great machine man. yeah it's vault great. per octave onto some low tune toms on those last three channels is it's just so sick I just mean, wild just job done yeah it's just you're you're off um production sir said don't forget the usb that comes of it yeah the the amount of one shot samples that come in that are great really that's great sick. pack of samples I mean, that's what i'm saying like you just get started with the euclidean straight into the squid and you're like there you go you could do a writing session and just be like up and running in a few seconds there's some a lot to be said for that, you know, because like I'm, I just, you know, you running a track and you go, what kind of flavor do I want? And you can just audition flavors in that rompler way, and it's like awesome because I mean some of the greatest sound sets are in there, you know. Mm. So it's really really cool for that. Yep. Well, we, I want to go back up to the Basimilus Iteritas Alter. There's an oh, ongoing yeah. trolling of me on the internet. It's a friend Gerald having a bit of fun. I wore, um, I have two of the same noise engineering T-shirt, and um, I was getting Which stick is... for constantly wearing it. In fact, to the point that uh, <laughs> Chris, bless them, uh, noise engineering said, "Hey, we've noticed you're still wearing that T-shirt a lot. Do you want me to send you a new one?" 
<laughs> so they're screaming that there's a Basimilus Atuitas altar in the case, which we'll, we'll come to in a second. But yeah. right in Great. right in shot, Bafaco crushed a lay, which is the why I've been choosing to put on my own. Oh yeah. Man, I love the crushed lay. Um please it don't does. hurt me by saying you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. Yeah, you know, obviously, I I, I, I kind of got involved with that because I saw like Christian Vogel, he had a rig set up with five of them in it. Did you ever see that picture? <laughs> I remember you telling me the tale, but I didn't see it. Yeah, I just thought that was awesome. So Christian is like, yeah, I'm just going to do a show with uh, just the crush delay. <laughs> sound creator you know modulating one against the other i mean it must be a hell of a sound yeah yeah it's just a lovely lovely piece sometimes when i boot up the system it doesn't come on hmm. and i need to repower it up i'm not sure what that's about but other than that i just yeah it's just a joy so what we, what's really cool about it is using the wet only mix as you know hmm. and then running like all your drum mix through it yeah and just like tracking the sound of it just degrading that source without it being an echo essentially yeah just being a pure sound degenerator like kind of I mean, monitoring the third head on a tape deck while yeah, you record but exactly. through a delay i love yeah, it really really great. i mean those pt so chips awesome. were cheap panasonic karaoke machine chips that's why it was <laughs> developed and then the fact it's so gritty but they've put there's limiters in the feedback path on this there's cv over everything there's those circuit bend switches i love throwing gates yeah. into those i find they're all a bit too aggressive for me musically to ever just leave on yeah. but firing an odd gating yeah, cool. for a kind of crush drum fill and then kind of letting it back out again i've got to try that i don't do that yeah i just yeah i mean again man so much time i've got to get got to get going on all this yeah this <laughs> the, the bottom part there is quite cool i mean yeah let's yeah, go to the bottom this is more like the more me i suppose this area I quite enjoyed having this, the uh, emblematic kind of the catalyst crossfade right next door to the, the Triga, whatever. That just feels like a great way to play the 301 because you okay. can use, you can essentially do a lot of, I made a patch where I did sort of logic based around the buttons and the slider. So I was pressing record with one button and then I let go. And then when I'd press and hold the top button, then the slider would access the uh the time position of the grains and then when i press and hold the bottom right one it would change like the pitch you know so you could kind of like make conditional logic inside the 301 so that the fader did different things and like uh it was just really <laughs> really sweet actually it's just the whole combination of that just feels was feels great it's great to have some buttons it was actually paul epworth that told me to get the arcade buttons and I mean, I'm not sure I need the sequencer on that thing, but it's kind of cool how like it's just a loose, free running beast. I kind of love that about it. You can't give it external clock or anything. I don't think the Trigo, right? It's just like a its own little universe of madness. Yeah, does its uh, own thing. It's just great to have buttons. It's really, really good to have buttons just because half the time, you know what I mean? With this stuff, you're like, what does it sound like? But like, that's one thing I would say I would like to on the, on the squid. If it had audition buttons and all the sounds like the assimilator, that would have been useful. Mm. Cause, uh, it's, but with the tr with that that trigger, I can't call it trigger. It's too weird, it, you know. Just like you know, you just like hit the button and then bam. It's, it's amazing how sometimes when you're building a Eurex system, you don't think of the most basic things. Like, how am I going to interact with this system? How am I going to make it go boom? You know what I mean? Yeah. How am I going to make it do a thing? Like and like, how do I like to make those kind of gestures? What I mean, and just sort of think about that. I see. I mean, get obviously the sound sources are great and whatever, but. If you can't like make it do a thing on time in the way you want it to, then it's not working, is it? No, no. Yeah, it's funny that. Um, again, I missed the name, but in the chat I saw that the Black Hole DSP2 does a bit crush delay. Yeah, the crush delay oh. is not specifically a bit crusher. It's a crush delay in that the PT chips used oh, yeah. get super crushed and noisy and... Unlike a bucket brigade delay when you push the time and the clock whine kind of comes down from audible hearing and you get this high-pitched whine, which is why a lot of bucket <laughs> brigades are quite filtered oh, yeah. just to get rid of it because it's right. not desirable. The PTs and certainly the Bafaco version, they don't filter the noise, but it is pure crushed noise, character, loveliness, as opposed to like, you know, power home or 
or a, or a pitch yeah check out a pt delay there's a few kind of more budget options some more fleshed out ones the mm. uh, bug brand is very nice for anyone wanting non-modular pt delays it's a really lovely thing um cool, man. but the basimilar satiritas alter i would get endless stick um there is mm-hmm. i think you can't see it behind me there's even a noise engineering sports bottle in this room <laughs> Amazing. when they got started i think they must have gone on one of those merch sites where you can have your logo on everything and just went ah you'll get a load of those and give them away <laughs> i'm not sure you can get a noise engineering sports bottle anymore um i'll maybe give yeah, it away man. at a modular meet sometime <laughs> but but similar to Turitas alter um how's that kind of making its way into your use of this and music in yeah. general just use it as a kick really yeah i mean uh I mean, I don't. I, I saw a video of it initially when it was really heavily modulated by like one of like a quad VCE or no a quad LFO, and I was like, man, this thing can take some modulation and it really comes alive. And uh, I should do more of that, but uh, I must admit, I just sometimes I'm just looking for a kick, you know, that I can really lean on, and it's, I think in my system it's the best I've got. <laughs> You know, um, which is kind of a lazy use for it, but and I know it can do a lot more. But I often don't want like the kind of metallic mm. edge that it offers. But then again, I wouldn't say never. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I do like the territory of noise that it goes into, and not many modules in my system can make that. Uh, so when I'm in the mood, I'll go into the other areas for sure. Yeah. You know, once again, my time is so limited these days. I kind of, it's really upsetting that I've got all this power and complexity, <laughs> you know, and, and ultimately that would be relegated to a kick, but it's not really relegated. It's just an incredible kick, isn't it? Yeah. And there's totally it's nothing wrong with it. I mean, if it was a module that you purely made your own samples out of yeah. and then never used other than putting it back into one of the samplers, like, well, why not? Yeah. Um, and you know even if it is just a kick there's kick drums that are bigger than that and less capable or smaller and less capable or more or less money or whatever but just Mm. the fact you can fine tune it to where you want yeah that's what i'm saying like it's not yeah it's it's really really and i will add a little bit of the noisy edge to it and just sort of whatever mess with it a bit i find envelopes help with that just bringing some of the noise in as the transient thinking like that's a good idea make the body that i like and then it's too aggressive yeah. but maybe i just want like the beater to be slamming into that's the drum idea. um so really tight envelopes yeah would, would be my thing on that um because questions are piling i will get to some questions um inky joked um jamie's life story we've got plenty of time um we, we won't go jamie's life story but it's a good point we didn't quite do life story, but I've got so many tabs open because I'm going to keep all the things we've mentioned. I'm going to put up as notes on Patreon after the show and maybe as a comment. Um, esoteric modulation. You were on the podcast with myself and Ed. There we go. That took a pleasure to be on. That yeah, took you guys are great. It. Love that part. We, um, yeah, we did much more general discussion outside of modular. Yes. We on that i will link it in the live chat for anyone wanting more so yeah sorry inky we won't do full life story <laughs> at this stage but we could do it again we can always do this in the in the future too but for sure. other questions that we will actually get to um db Powlin asked why did you choose nashville was it the music scene no not really but uh looking for a house that we could buy because we were living in new york me and my wife before and just couldn't buy in new york and we looked in la and uh didn't sort of work <laughs> mm-hmm. and so yeah just looking for more for our money and at the time you could get a lot in nashville and now the market is crazy here it's in the last 10 years it's gone ballistic yeah uh, but um yeah just a house so we, we've got a really big house which we've come to really like and and it's a good it's a good scene it's a little bit slow compared to a lot of the metropoli out there yeah but that can really have its advantages i quite like this sort of mindset of traveling to the madness and and living somewhere yeah (laughs) i mean i'm i'm 46 you know i've done a lot of the metropoli life so i think it's good play we've got kid and yeah where where do you want the family to be yeah that kind of stuff 
Um, it's a good family town. Mm. Learning Modular, uh, Chris, hello if you're still there, mentioned that gain staging is going to be an issue with those surge modules from Random Source as their levels are lower than normal Yoro rack. We really went into yeah. this with the uh, feeding the monster and patching the monster streams, and Chris has covered this really nicely in a lot of videos. But yeah, they work expecting a lower input and they output slightly lower. Are you largely patching them together and having no issue, or do you like how they drive a little bit if you're pushing other modules into them, or... Do you have no issue mm. at all and gain staging is completely fine? No, I do have issues. I mean, I, that's where if I'll use certain output modules, just the the signal to noise will be an issue. Yeah, for sure. That's like I say, like, I mean, but yeah, I, if I'm in a surgy mood, I tend to top, put all that stuff together as yeah. a kind of a, as a universe, which is, which is nice. Mm. It just sort of, and then, and then at that point, it's less of an issue. Yeah. Because they're not, they're not really having to. Although I did notice his point, and I'm going to try this well, by attenuating going into the wave shapers. I've, I've, I've not done that, and that's wise, mm. just because they also can be so useful with other modules. And if, if, if the level's blowing them out, then they're not as useful. They're not as nuanced. Yeah. So yeah, gain staging throughout everything. I mean, I'm quite gain stage fascist in the rest of the studio. So um, <laughs> well, it would be nice to have more control over that. That like Frap Tools three one two, whatever it is, three two one, is mm -hmm. it? That that did look like a good thing to to add to rig. Anything that can can allow you to yeah, bring things up and down and just try what that does. And yeah, having clean gain is obviously in the studio one of the holy grails. You know, so. Yeah. If a signal is too quiet, that is often not a great thing. No. But uh, it's been all right. Mm. I'll quick fire some of these because there's other cases to go through. <laughs> and uh, not that we're yeah, in a super yeah. rush to end in five minutes, but there's a lot of questions generally. Yeah. Um, we had a I've lot generally got, about your vlog. Sorry. I've probably got about an hour okay. before I need to get back to live duties. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And not stream your whole life story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, so it's great. I mean, I'd love to have chat. Man. Yeah, so we'll awesome. we'll cap it. We're about an hour in. We'll we'll call it another hour, and and we'll we'll wrap up. And if there's uh, yeah plenty of questions, I'll try and maybe get some answered afterwards. And uh, we can maybe look to do it in the future as well. But oh yeah, man, love it to rattle yeah. through. Yeah. Um, Al W asked early on, uh, being such a fantastic vocalist, do you ever run your vocals through the Yaro rack? And if so, what are your go-to modules? I mean, I have a little bit. I'll be honest. Um, yeah, I've, I've not. I've, my, the 301 is is my is my favorite module for that currently, just because I've made something for it, which is like a, a grain sampler that was pretty nice actually. It was involved using the catalyst, and I had this idea. I show I shared it on a nitty mm. a while back. One of my nitty gritties. It was like um, using the crossfade on the catalyst to essentially take a monophonic take take signals that are in tune and in unity and like spread them out at their furthest point so essentially you're going towards a chord so you go from one chord to another chord and like with a vocal freeze essentially what's nice about that is you can just be singing a, like a constant drone and then open it out you know mm. and then that whole frozen grain starts to expand so that was that was really satisfying. I love that idea of expanding to yeah. a chord. The Arbor granular from so uh, Instro, its pitch shift that adds allows random shifting of pitch for the grains mm. it's seeding goes through the scale intervals to being um, octaves at the other end. So you can have it like bounce, like a third yeah, up and right. a third down, and it just different, just a different approach to pitch. But I love that idea of like branching to a chord tone with a surge with the three ntos i have it's quite a magical thing if i want people to sort of feel the joy of the modular that's that would be one thing that sometimes i show them that and they're like holy shit that because it's so musical because in the space in between chords is some pretty incredible world yeah do you know what i mean you're heading towards like you know some kind of tonal stability but in between can just be a magical universe and of course you 
put all the outputs of the oscillators through some verbs and through some delays and <laughs> you know well, you're in a quite a sweet zone yeah it, it can get quite heady but it's uh depending on what you have as your starting and ending chords if it's a big range then you know you can get into some pre weird zones but just yeah sometimes the crossfade right in the middle can just be so delightful mm. i suppose what you could also do is have some quantizers at the ready and then sort of maybe use one of the trigger buttons to sort of auto quantize that output and then let go and then then go back to a free unquantized world you know what i mean things like that with vocal processing are interesting to me because that's something i can't do mm. yeah very easily in a computer in that way where you can really play it Putting a vocal through a delay in a Eurorack is not very compelling to me because no. I can do that in other ways. But having some system that is, yeah, it's 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 a little bit tricky. I'll be honest. It's not I, the sampling of the vocal is usually my favourite thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh yeah, the crush delay though. My, <laughs> you've chosen a good one there. Yeah, because. Uh, <laughs> They're so extreme that it kind of is hard to get another unit that sounds quite like that. Mm. So, yeah. you, I mean, the filters are good. Filters are great. Yeah. I like to have some bandpass filtering is really spectacular on the vocal. Yeah. Uh, I would like to try the new Duranalog, the filter mm. eight that it's got. Obviously, you don't need to tell you. It's just the bandpass on that thing is the best I've heard yet. Mm. I love the bandpass on that thing. I mean, it's all incredible, but the bandpass is. I bought, I got it because I, I love this certain sound of an ARP, I think it must be. Certain lead sounds like on Ohio Players, the worm. Okay. It's like got a really tearing sound. I'm assuming it's a, an ARP. But mm. I've never been able to quite get that tonal range on a filter before. But I think with the filtrate, I can kind of get close. Mm, nice. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. You mentioned uh, nitty gritties. For anyone that doesn't know, Jamie has a podcast hanging out with audio files that I strongly recommend going right back to episode one. Go back a few years and catch up, oh. which is what I'm currently doing. Thanks, man. So you've mentioned yeah, a few yeah. people you've had on that I'm like, I, I very, for some reason, I get really vigilant with podcasts. I'm like, nope, I'm just going to keep playing through this and I'm just going to work my way wow. through. Instead of being that's like, oh, I'll jump 50 episodes forward because th that's cool or a friend's on or something like that. I do sometimes, but certainly with yeah. this, if there's some, you know, there's names on there that I'm unaware of or people I know less of than others. So it's like, I just want right. to go back and absorb the thing. Really, really cool. Um, and I'll, it's been a big labor of love for me. I mean, yeah. it's really become something of uh of a career in a way mm. ugly word maybe but um yeah it's taken up so much of my time and energy and passion really i think most importantly it's just something that i've always wanted to do my wife's really happy that i'm doing it because she's like it's the most one of the most you things that you've ever done because like i love chatting and i love to explore ideas and and having a banter with interesting people and uh yeah no thanks for the plug man mm. i mean um yeah, hopefully there's something in there. Every episode I do, I run through something of an idea. Yeah, that that is the nitty admit. gritty. We should say that it's a, yeah. a kind of pause for thought. Let's check something out. I I really enjoyed the pitch tracking. Were you looking at the MS20 as one oh, of the yeah. examples? That was really cool. Um, there's there's I mean look, I've done <laughs> I've done 68 of them now, yeah, and uh, yeah. it's definitely uh, kind of almost a challenge to come up with a new one at this mm. point. But uh, there's always something. Yeah, kind of on that note, uh, Gerald Fjord, uh, chief noise engineering troller of my uh, noise engineering T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Good dude. He uh, he says that uh, now we've seen you doing some videos, can we expect any modular-based videos? Yeah, I mean, I've been... Yes, I think it's a short answer. Yeah, okay. I've, um, yeah, I would like that. I would like that. I mean, maybe, you know... I want to demonstrate this 301 patch I made because it took me a long time and I've unpatched it now. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to have to try to make the bastard work because it took a lot of cables. And But now I've got this Tesseract, like, you know, I to C box. I can, my aim was to kind of do less cabling. Yeah. I'll repatch it. I'll rebuild it. Mm. And uh, he's actually updated the firmware to like 0.5 or something and, it's meant to make the performance loads better. So I was struggling to make that patch in stereo. So maybe it will work now in stereo. Okay. So yeah, maybe that would be a good place for me to start because it is quite a cool patch. 
Yeah, for very our unique vocal thing as well. That's that's certainly really what I'd want to say. I mean, I'd love to sit and, and watch you play with filters and things, but I'd rather have the the kind of super Jamie Liddell approach to this stuff. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah, it's just sort of trying to yeah trying to make it fit the the music. But I mean, mm. what is the music? Sometimes you just want tone, don't you? I mean, mm. a lot of the time I'll just use this as tone generating station. Yeah, and then uh, continue. Mm. <laughs> uh, no rules. No. No, they shouldn't be. Um, Dark yeah. Sparkler brought up, and I think we touched on this a little bit in the esoteric modulation episode, that you spoke about your original idea was to get into Buchla. Um On that note, yeah. did you get a complex oscillator in Euro, the kind of Buchla 259 equivalents? No. I mean, you know, the NTO, my oscillators currently are the NTOs, which are the, you know, the random source version of the the surge um oscillators and uh now i do have the generate three which is you know it's complex yeah <laughs> it's uh and it has its own flavor and i i don't know i have the uh the cloud terrarium yeah but uh those were really my oscillator choices at the moment um, you know, you get into the range of that that book, the style, I suppose. Yeah. But uh, not quite the same. I did try a bookler at um, Nam, one of the small like two or eight season. Mm. Oh, I was really into that thing. Yeah. But I don't need more. I don't need more. <laughs> I can't. I can't. On the note of more and lovely Sims, uh, last question yeah. before we get back into Yoro stuff. Um, there's a few of us I've noted that are complete side steps from modular we'll try and round up with some of those um yeah dual tracks world's going to end apocalypse uh what's the first thing for you grab it's a bit of a weird premise the world's going to end then thinking that, and it, they they did say it, thinking that you actually want a synth at that time <laughs> yeah i definitely wouldn't want a synth uh i don't know <laughs> a, a funny relationship with synths i i like them but i could also lose them all if you know what i'm saying yeah there's no there's this there's this part of me that sort of um sometimes i imagine this blissful moment when i just get rid of everything and it would hurt me a bit but probably not that much. Mm. So I don't know if I have that kind of, I mean, I have a Rhodes Chroma and I have like the the Mini and I have a Voyager and I've got the MS-20 and the, I know, and then these Polys and then all this Eurorack. I don't know, man. I just, I would like to think that I would just be like, ah, oh, sod it. <laughs> I mean, I want to put all this stuff in its rightful place in a way, which is, it's, it is really compelling but at the same time, there's so many ways to make sound. Yeah. That I, I might just be happy with just rubbing two sticks together, you know. <laughs> that might just be the thing. <laughs> the apocalypse, yeah. Yeah. I just play my teeth with a little, you know, <laughs> just play my teeth with a rock. <laughs> <laughs> and try not to knock them out. So yeah. we'll move over. Um, I am still taking note of questions. Um, again, thanks to everyone in the live chat. It's really cool, really active chat. It's great. Moving over. Sorry if that answer was a bit... You know, no, it's, it's a hard question to answer, that kind of... Yeah, it, I just don't know if I have a favourite, maybe, is my simple answer. And it would change for me. Like, I yeah. get, just, just coming back to that point, they're like, oh, what's your favourite oscillator? It's like, well, right. we, we, need a, we need a bracket around that. We need some, we need some, some framework to, to get into that. Yeah. But even when we get to, like, it's usually the one I'm using... It's kind of yeah, there you go. <laughs> to finish it, that project it? and then that might not be That's it right. it's like I, it. the parallels i make is often guitars that like a les paul may right. just be absolutely rocking for a project but then you, you just need to kick off the humbuckers you just need a strat you just need that telly you That's just um i miss having multiple guitars around truth be told we don't need to get yeah. into the right. guitar past there's only a telecaster in this room now um, yeah, which is a lovely thing. Good choice, man. Nashville, man. All yeah, the way. but it, it, but it's not <laughs> it's not the right thing for everything. Um, nah. it does have the pickups. You don't always want a twang. No, although it does have the uh, pickup mod where they're in series rather than uh, parallel. So it does kick out a bit more volume. It's got a little bit of a buck, as it were. Anyway, <laughs> people aren't here for guitar, so um, we'll dive back Fair across play. to <laughs> <laughs> dive back across the second case. Yeah. 
any stand, what any real standouts in there? We mentioned Luba earlier, and that's a you know a new thing. You really love the yeah. R1 VCA. Um, Mimia Fon is fantastic. Dipole is is a, a treasure. Uh, really, I mean, and yeah, I will admit the 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 matter hasn't had as much use as I thought it would. Mm. Even though it's really fun, just because I love boxes that are just so esoteric and just wonky like that and it, it does really just need lots of modulation and lots of experimentation and just hit record the whole time and then make something of it uh yeah i just i am actually this center rack is just a really useful rack obviously being in the middle i try to make it just everything and uh, the mutes the mutes are terrible whoever made that <laughs> Joke. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but they, but they, <laughs> the mutes are awesome, man. You know what? I, you know what I want now. I want another mute because I was inspired by that chat I had last time with uh, William Fields because he's doing this macro control of all of his shit on a on an iPad, and like he sends, he can just send envelopes to loads of destinations really quickly. And I was like, oh, the mutes are great for that because. They cascade down, don't they? Mm. If you send one signal into the top one, it goes down to all four. If you don't, if you don't patch it into them, which is like super nice, just for having say like one of the mutes just dedicated to attack time, and the other one dedicated to re to release mm. or decay, and then just being able to send <laughs> like your kind of macro attack and decay to like your lead synth your bass sound your drum decay snare and kick you know what i'm saying so you have kick snare like bass and another sound on the four outputs of mutes and like the input is actually just your your basically i guess a fixed voltage that represents the attack time and then you would need like envelope generators like like a maths or a contour that mm. can allow you to adjust your attack and decay but if you could do that, then you could kind of essentially do some of that macro control, which would be superb. And I find that frustrating in modular, not being able to have more macro control. It's just a ball ache, isn't it? I mean, to do the thing he was doing in his, like internally in a computer, I realized you'd need like, you know, 16 VCAs, you know, yeah. each chat is just like some things that just take, there's, there's so much brute force to get things done in modular. Sometimes it can be a bit harrowing to try and do it i would love to be able to just sort of, sort of take a patch and go make it snappy everything snappy yeah <laughs> do you know what i'm saying things and like the catalyst things like the catalyst help that does help and like the adac system vc transitions yeah, the mac right. macro from daniel miller and future sound systems but still yeah, they're yeah. a handful of voltages I remember my friend uh, Phil Hall, an amazing live sound engineer, but performs in modular himself as well. And we were playing on uh, just a large set of studio monitors. It was at Huddersfield University. It's a bit of an impromptu, like, okay, let's throw a performance in. It's not, you know, nothing important particularly. But, you know, we perform. We give a nice talking point for this little modular get together. And he was sort of saying that not being able to hear the low end properly his approach to that was to play around with the decays of all his kicks and low end bass because it was about how much yeah. length right. of time of low end per That's note it. can i throw into That's the room right. so it was a case of we don't have a sub that would have been ideal but if i can make the kick a bit longer it's just gonna hang that bit more and it was about like the as you say like just making kick snappy or making them longer instantly and, and, yeah yeah. Not looking for it, not finding the no. module, not remembering where the VC, not remembering where the envelope was, and you you don't want to be thinking like that if you're just hearing this thing like oh, I want it all snappy. It's like you know what I mean. It's like that's that's uh, I mean that is something obviously the Circlon can help with because yeah. it it it's sending out a lot of those in, those signals, but at the same time it's not the most hands on for certain no. things either. To be quite honest. So uh, yeah, that's been that's been a bit of a, a mission trying to work it out. But my philosophy with having the mutes in that area is like you could have a signal coming into those channels before it hits, like say the X pan, and then yeah. before it hits the L one. So that's kind of like a mixing zone. I mean, I do like these ideas of the module having. I mean, 
you're comparing it to something like Chris's monster web, this is a very like contained system really. Mm. But there, there's my output system, basically starting from mutes, going across the XPAN, the L1, and then you know the uh, NW2S or whatever the uh, the the little I/O module, which is uh, mostly used, I'll be honest, for sending signals into the modular. It, the outputs of it go into a little SSL six, mm. um, so they're directly patched. So if I just, it's nice. I can just get sound going really quick. If I plug in a decent level into that thing, it works just fine. Uh, again, maybe that was my issue with it initially, is I was taking outputs from the surge and being a bit disappointed by yeah. the signal's noise. Maybe just a bit but too close to it. That was just unfair. Mm. A bit unfair to do that. Um, but yeah. It's interesting. That, that, I love that rack. I love just like the effects world uh, of modular. I love um, CV control over effects. Just even that simple idea is such a powerful one, and uh, you can you can get so much so much power as you know just mm. from working with effects. Yeah, effects and filtering on their own, regardless of of the rest of it, with whatever sound source you want: drums, vocals, live instruments. Just can't, if that's your if you love effects, then modular is definitely a, a good place for you. Yeah, the uh, so many good options. It's interesting and nice to see mutes kind of expanding out a mix section. That was one of the original ideas of, and I nearly just made a whole of a follow up video that was just that like expand your mixes with mutes because it just yeah. it's just handy. And I know not everybody very, wants very to be hands on necessarily. You know, I, it's not as universally as appealing as maybe a VCA is or a nice delay or something and not everybody physically wants to do things but it just it's a great module it was totally Fantastic. missing when i designed it and there's some great other mutes since as well happy nerdings is cool the stum from future sound systems is really nice as yeah. well right right right. Yeah. i'm just super happy these things exist they're great um I mean, mute, it awesome. didn't at all <laughs> when I Photoshop yeah. drew it up. No. Um, I'm very proud we did wonderful. it. I'm not saying I wouldn't have if others existed, but um, yeah, it was just nice. That really, really love it. Modulars moved that way. Um, yeah. One other thing in that that system, I wondered how how kind of if you get kind of heady and into like the woggle bug and maths and random voltages and is that kind of like a geeking out, enjoying sound kind of thing or? You have to have random voltages in the modular rig, mm. I think. Yeah. I think if you're not going to use some randomness in the modular, then I don't know. That's just my personal thing. I think it's just one of the. I think the more I use these systems, the more I want to combine CV sources so that you have periodicity with randomness involved in its path. You know, for say something like. Uh, a CV source that you might want to use for the Luba, you know, mm -hmm. you might want to change something about it, but you don't want it to be a linear, you don't want it to be a periodic LFO, really. That's just quite a, can be quite a dull path. So I think just having the ability to, to disrupt any of your modulations, you know, I think you have to, I, I like the idea of taking these things and blending them together to make a kind of combined cv path and then uh, then feeding that into stuff it's a really uh, big so thing for me stuff. yeah having it's something really that's like free and drifty and then something random and something that's like envelope per note yeah. every time a key is hit exactly man it's mindsets isn't it it's, it's just like think of the world think of the world of sound and think of the things you love i'm often drawn to things that are quite um wobbly i mm. say it in my nitties all the time i like a good wobbler so <laughs> any anything that's uh anything that can kind of help me wobble i mean woggle i mean you know it's, it's in the name i've i've got something for you i, I keep teasing module coming uh -uh. difficult module number uh -uh. three yeah, that's, we'll, uh, uh, okay. sorry yeah. to the live chat well i'm kind of not i keep Love it. mildly teasing do it I'll, uh, we're about a month off and uh i'll certainly be hitting okay. you for uh Maybe some space-saving, oh. interesting wobble action. But um, yeah. that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to tease. Yeah, hey, after the oct, you've got even more wobble. <laughs> I've got an oct in my rig too, mate. Yeah. I've got an oct in there. Let's pull that across. Yeah. So, there you go. So this is case number three. We don't... I mean, yeah. I, it, it makes me so kind of proud to see oct and things in there. And oct, for those wondering, because I get asked daily, which is really cool that people want in on it, um, stock will be with Instro and out to all the stores within a couple of weeks from now. Probably start of June for those wanting to pick up an Oct. But there, there's a lot to go at with this case. But 
let's start there. Yeah. I don't mean it as an overly self promo thing, no, but no, how no. how I mean, are you finding that concept of? Because the thing I always get asked is, why can't I sync it? Why is it just triangle waves? Oh no, no, that's um, just the wrong way of looking at it. Yeah, that's it's totally not the, the way intent. It is. But I'm all for. I mean, it's. I was aware of that. <laughs> I didn't design yeah. it and think, oh, God, I should have put a sink on there. Exactly. It, it wasn't the point. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. But does that does that generally yeah. fit the workflow of just, like, turn things until it feels right? You're not too precious about absolute control over every single thing? No, absolutely. You want to be surprised, don't you? I mean, uh, you want, uh, well, I do at least. Uh, but yes, when you want to be surprised, you want to be surprised. That's maybe that's the better way of looking at it. Uh, you know, so yeah, with something like the with the cloud terrarium, as you know, you, you, I mean, although it can't take that much modulation, which is a bit of a shame, but it can take a bit. And um, it's lovely just to have those things on the drift. And like, I'll, I'll want a few things to just be drifting around. You know, filter drifts, everything just drifting around, and and. Uh, if you're going to have to be setting up LFOs all the time for that, that's that's cool. But look at the size of Oct. It's just a lovely, lovely, discreet little piece just to get things moving very quickly again. I mean, much like with, uh, you know, the Euclidean circles, it's just like patch into it, get going, you know. Yeah. It's like just a beautiful thing sometimes when you're making a patch. It's like, I want movement. I want movement. I don't care about, like, I just, I'll feel it if the periodicity is wrong. Yeah. Then I'll plug it into the lower outputs and slow it down, and then then great, off we go. It's it's, it's really it's a beautiful thing, uh, often used. So, mm. yeah, oh, again, great. great job, man, love it. So the we mentioned them earlier, T forty threes from VPME, ah, yeah, yeah. which Just, I don't think uh, enough people know about. It's so useful. I have it next to the um, next to the quad drum from uh, VPME, which is a cool, it does synth voice, uh, bass drums and some samples as well. But I almost use the switches like a sample select because it it has modes where an increasing knob turn or increasing CV will select a sample. Now, that's that's not to say that I know exactly what's going to happen when I turn up like two and one and go up a minor third. It's not of any relevance to the sample I'm selecting, but they're different. Uh, yeah. It's just the voltage where if it's off, I select a sound and then I can bounce around with diff- different switch settings. Not the intended use particularly because it's a very accurate voltage and yeah. transposition source, but just when you're thinking it'd be cool into the um, squid sample. Assimilator. Yeah, or the assimilator, yeah, the like sample select. You could, Dude, I'm sure just, on I've the, never thought of that. That's an amazing idea. I'm sure on the assimilator, you could have a different kick or something on every switch. And then that, when people kind of ask that question, how do I do a live set where things are changing? It's like, bang, yeah. put one of those next to it, cue up like yeah. five different sets of drum sounds. You can maybe do it well, through, that, a, yeah. through a, through a um, series of buffered mults or something. You could have each switch change out the whole sample set. Um, Great, I mean, that, great idea. It'd be some setting up to do all the zones and things on the assimilator, but it'd be cool. Yeah, and it wouldn't be that bad. I mean, no. yeah, it would be. <laughs> it'd, be it'd be a little bit boring. <laughs> More but than a computer it, yeah, that, bad, but not bad relative yeah. to other hardware, I don't think. Yeah, and I think with the assimilator, you, if you're trying to, I, I've stopped doing that with the assimilator. There is a little bit of a Mac program to, to that's called a sim, I think. Okay. Someone made it. It's like, uh, kind of a like a very very basic bit of programming where you can pull in waves and make programs and it will it will save it all out that really is pretty handy Mm. and you can even do zones and more complicated stuff you can you can do you can distribute sounds over ranges and and like fancy stuff but I, I, I've been envious. Uh, Dave Ctech is a big modular user as well. He's great with his modular. He makes rocking music out of it. He just has this cool aesthetic with it. And he his solution to the sample thing, which I think there's a lot of people's solution, is to use those tip top. Yeah, tip top modules. Ones. Yeah, he's got six of them. And then like he has kicks on the first one, snares, and there's another one of those. And I was like, oh man, that's actually that's genius. Because <laughs> then you just turn it until you've got the right kick and then that module is just a kick generator and that's all it does mm. that's clever yeah that's a, that's a good solution because it's just like you're not messing around a lot of this stuff is like you sometimes can lose the flow if you're 
there's a lot of setup in the simulator. I will say that's a downside of it. It's quite a bore to 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 set it up. But I mean, obviously, it's so powerful. Yeah. The screen is pretty small. You can't have everything. No. They should have made an art editor for the computer. I'm surprised they didn't do that. But um, more more manufacturers, I would like that. My pet peeve is that there's no way in something like Pro Tools to add markers to a WAV. I know you can do it with Reaper, but it's a real bore. Mm. And uh, I'd love to be able to do that in Ableton and Pro Tools just because everyone has that standard now of being able to mark the WAV, but there's not much really elegant solutions I found in software to do it. Mm. I want to just do a tab to transient and just like, you know, you yep. can do it in Reaper. You can do it in Reaper, but I'd rather never use Reaper if I can avoid it. <laughs> this is <laughs> me. Fair enough. But back to the uh, yes. T43s. I imagine right, pitch sauce is mm. quick, quick interval generation, yeah. octave switching. Yeah. You, you know, you can see it's right by the NTOs. So, uh, I just, uh, I love it for just, like I said, like, for example, a quick example would be I'll either use this something like, you know, maybe I'll use the Ornament of Crime. I've got two of those Ornament Crimes. There's one new one on the case to the left as well. Mm. And uh, just love those things. Uh, just awesome. And uh, the Shift Register or something like that. I did that the other day, and it was just a staggeringly beautiful patch. I was like, wow, listen to this guy. And... Uh, yeah, just having, just always having those those guys in line whenever I'm going to be dealing with the CV signal. I'm only, there's only three of them, obviously, but yeah, just the you'll have information coming in, and just the ability to make a switch and play the intervals is just as just gold. I yeah. mean, it's really what I use as the switches. I just use the switches. Yeah, I use. I don't them really even a... mess with like adding another external signal to. Yeah, oh, no. well, that's the nice thing that you can, as like a precision adder, add voltage to a, say, a quantized yeah. sequence, yeah. or yeah. you yeah. can yeah. just yeah. output the quantized sequence. Or there's there's three three inputs. There's the A and the B, which I always sum, and then there's the switch yeah. for the C. You can negatively add or positively. It um, would be nice to take a sequence in and then transpose it with a hard voltage. It'd be yeah. kind of nice to take the output of the second one into the first ones. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, you could chain is, them like cascade. Yeah. So not a, kind of cool, base actually. level transposes, but intervals like widen as well would Whoa, be cool. Oh, that'd be kind of sweet, actually. be kind of an odd way to generate chords, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's we'll right. yeah, That's why That's why they're so <laughs> we'll have to try inspiring. It. Yeah, because yeah, they're so... I love modules that are so beautifully elegant and simple in in amongst the car and a case that can get quite overwhelming. But the NTOs are beautifully simple as well. I mean, all the surge stuff... Well, the, I mean, except for the, the NCOM, which is not getting a lot of use, I'll be honest. But, uh, you know, there, obviously there's that filter as well, the uh, yeah, the, the Twin Cologne Peak. one. Yeah, yeah is it Twin Clung? Peak. I always say it wrong. Yeah. I know Felix, Tuesday Night Machines, says it much more elegantly than uh, me. Clangbao, I think it is, or something like that. Yeah, Clangbao, yeah. Yeah, great, it's Rob great. Hardike's Twin Peaks, uh, or Twin Peak filter. Peak. I've not tried it. Really, really nice, nice tonal character. Yeah, you can really get it to sound like a three hundred three. Okay, it's the only thing in my case that can get to a three hundred three level of like aggro. Um, great for a ping. You'd actually love it because it's probably the greatest pingable filter in my yeah. system. Probably got quite a long way actually. So it's a yeah, it's a ping monster. A ping machine. So uh, ping machine. Yeah. <laughs> James Siegler did a great. Uh, video years back i think it was on the epoch modular version of that um yeah one cool thing the t43s just to kind of keep singing their praises for a second yeah. they're useful i find for offsetting um lfos as well ah that's such a good idea so like with vcas and things that won't take negative voltages yes. now there's not brilliant enough to fully offset a standard lfo you'd, you'd want to come if it's minus five to plus five you'd want to come up by five and there's not five octaves of voltage but it goes somewhere to kind of shifting and yeah, managing no, things around right. Right. which works that would be a great i mean just the, these modules with switches that do things i mean you know <laughs> there's there's something satisfying about that so yeah more of those mm. and this case is a very much uh, i just threw this guy together so it's not i'm yeah, not sure about up. it I'm not sure about it. It's, I mean, what's uh, interesting, the, the module on the bottom right you might not be aware of or, or familiar with 
it sends out DMX to a light I have. Okay. <laughs> it says CV to DMX for the for the light, uh, which I haven't really used very much, but it does work. Uh, it's kind of cool. Was that a li- then a live thing? You're thinking of live? Yeah, yeah just kind of like the idea, just you know, mood, it's like quite nice. inspiration, can, mood in the studio kind of thing. Yeah, you can fade and change the color of the lights just with the actual knobs on the thing. And the light is a. Re- I got a big light at one point, and it's just far away. <laughs> So yeah. it's just it was really kind of sweet, actually, just to turn the light down. It's actually like a light switch. You can you can like add some controls to it that make it like give you a little bit of a party vibe. Um, so yeah, and then that little actually that Bastel cinnamon is a good filter. That yeah, underrated yeah, maybe. Quite powerful. Hmm. You can I, quite, I like it. It's a it's a great utility filter, and uh, the dark matter. I've never got along with the dark matter, I'll be quite honest. Oh, the live chat's going to be so upset. As soon as they saw this image, they always talk about the dark matter. I've still yeah, not tried I it. Just, I, I really it's, enjoyed it's it good. at Super Booth. Um, but that it's was good, but I'm a, I'm a bit of a fascist with the overdrives. <laughs> I've got just a lot of very good ones in the, in the outboard domain. Overstayer and the Culture Vulture and um, a lot of pedals and stuff. And I do like it. it don't get me wrong. It is cool. Um, is feedback a good. thing you like? Because obviously it's heavily kind of feedback, feedback based. I like feedback, but it, it yes, it's just I mean, the look, tonal color of the saturation. Yep, 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 yep. Is it's the thing. It's just it's it's good. It's good. It's for some people, it might be the one. I thought it was going to be the one for me. Um, it pains me to say that it's not quite the one for me. But um, it, it, again, not taking it away from anyone else. I think I might prefer the plasma drive, but just okay. for the full full aggression because it's just a tone of color i don't have mm. do you know what i mean yeah i can get the kind of fuzz that thing offers in other ways i might prefer more i particularly like i mean i'm a spoil for choice man i mean i put you know a couple of tg channels into each other in preamp mode and it's just as fuzz like it's just glory mm. you know but then that's annoying to patch into the modular yeah i have had some success though patching the like the Mutron biphase, like in Ooh. back in line with the with the whole system, and uh, man, it just is. <laughs> it's so sick when you get it going <laughs> in and out, and you can feed back. Yeah, I mean that that starts to become something that actually opened up my whole modular rig. Was patching in more studio pieces into the I/O, and thinking, oh, hang on a minute, this is getting really sick. Like. Yeah, like tape delays and like um, just more compression, external compression, and mm. just like opened up the rig like wildly. We don't need to do tape delays. That is another stream. I'm yes. knee deep in uh, my echo. I got Sorry. my echoplex fixed. For all those people no that way. have heard me moaning that it, I got it, had Dude, a beautiful well t- couple of hours. It was a, a hairline crack in the playback amplifier. I don't know much about oh. tape, and I'm not a tech by any means in terms of fixing anything but everyone was like screaming at me like clean the heads clean the heads and i'm like no because the sound the the, the sound has disappeared entirely is what had happened and i'm like it doesn't go from working to not if it's just like gunk on the heads and the tapes dirty it It would go through hiss and rubbish and yeah yeah Yeah. um, little crack uh absolute brucey bonus price of 60 pounds to fix an echo plex man i was so over the moon um if i'd have had the cables to hand never mind this crushed which is very nice we would have had echo plex on the mic (laughs) but yeah Yeah, can you disable that you disable the record head i mean the erase head with like a piece of cardboard or something it's got sound on sound mode and i have a three minute 45 second tape loop in there but the way i need to experiment now i've got it back uh, friend richard well quirk done. has two ep2s Policy. the tube one he yeah. said one of one of the sound on sound modes takes around 10 minutes for the loop to kind of uh-huh. degrade into the tape to effectively get rid of it he said the other is over three hours i had mine on for an wow. hour and it didn't didn't because there's no erase head just it's on Amazing. it's on the t- <laughs> It's just so just, it's just, so, it's just surprising. People don't realize that about cassette yeah. tapes. They, they, they're, they're wonderful things. Oh my God, they, I mean, the Nagra's out of shot here, but it's mm. one of my old, you know, obviously uh, people are well hip to the Nagra now, but uh, that's been in my arsenal for since, uh, you know, about 2006. Mm. 
made it on so many things and god man you just can't mess with tape it's the, it's the king it was in the other case so i won't flash the image back but the 4ms dld retained its memory yeah. of about two minutes 54 and that's that, that that's surprised cool. me where you're that's running cool. like a, a soft sine wave melody through it this haunting like echoed out sine wave and then it's a, a great unit there. And then a break beat comes in because I've just stretched all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 it? totally. And it's that same mindset of like, all oh, right, that's at the end of that tape loop. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's a great, great unit. Mm. I, I love that thing. It's a tone color that I don't have in a lot of delays. I like a clean delay sometimes, like mm. a brutal digital one. Yeah. So they're great. They're really good. Uh, yeah, and obviously this Dur analog stuff, again, once thanks to you, Ben, like hip me to this stuff. I mean, um, what a fantastic kind of collection he's made. Yeah. Just so good. Even even like the the contour is just like just bang. Crazy. Like everything's so cool. He's got such yeah. an, an eye Love. well an ear for, for how things sound as well as a technical mind and Yoren really does strike that kind of magical balance, I think. He does such a good job. So I'm going to try and hopefully hermod out some chordal worlds to the generate and the three yeah. NTOs and just you know, mm. I wanted basically Magneto's there. Magneto is great. Yeah, that was I mean, the one I was going to come back to. Forget, I forget how good it is. It is sick. And if when you take that thing out of the rack, you think these guys went in. I mean, they are like <laughs> PCBs all over that bastard. It's just, <laughs> it's massive. It's a lot of work. That that thing is pretty incredible. That was my uh, favorite mode on the Big Sky for a while. The Magneto. Um, right, really, okay. really lovely. Um, it's awesome. It's a, it's a, yeah. If you're gonna, I have no, no regrets recommending that one. That's mm. just a, a beauty, isn't it? Watching um, Scanner on it in a live performance, just going into the looping and pitch shifting live, just completely free with the thing was just a real stunning thing. And then for me, simple. just simple delay. It was in my kind of live ambient yeah. setup for a while and just. Not, I mean, it's not exactly like tape. Tape's wonkier, but just, just living as you. I think you said swimming in a tone earlier was the phrase you used. That, <laughs> I, I often say like ba Sorry. bathing in a sound, just completely going. I'm going to live oh, yeah. in this feedback. Yeah, it's great. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it. I, yeah, it can be a bit confusing to remember what the modes all yeah, do. Yeah, I tend to use it quite, very quite simply. Overwhelming. So do I. I mean, it's a shame because the other modes are really good, but mm. uh, you know. Yeah, there you go, man. That's a quick, quick tour of the uh, current rig. I must admit, I have quite a few modules behind me that are just sad. Well, this you know, changed full, from full pressure points with brains and like the eloquencer and like yeah, the full Maleco kind of world mm. is not really used right now. And some other, a lot of things that are kind of in a sad state. The Bitbox sampler, which I do really like, um, but I just don't have space for it right now. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, there's loads of loads of great stuff out there. Yeah, and uh, but if there's any more questions, I know I've, I've yeah, kind of we're, got we're good, like chatting. I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. If we go for sort of ten minutes ish, we'll do a yeah, last call for, for live questions. But I'll, I'll rattle through some of the other ones that we had, just general questions. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we'll start with uh, Quantum Space asked, "Was it Prince that brought you to work with Atom, Yui Schmidt?" As in Atom. So, it says Atom is yeah, Atom Hat. Yeah. It wasn't wasn't Prince, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I don't uh, know quite the backstory of all that, so it was a, a... Yeah. No, I mean, you know, we were aware of each other for a while. It's more like a connection via, I think probably from the Matthew Herbert universe, actually. I, okay. I'm not quite sure, actually. It's a good question. It's been a while. He, he, he yeah. He's great, though. He's mm -hmm. great. Tom Lewis asked, um, how long do you tend to leave a patch patched? Good question. Uh, a night. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe two. Yeah. Very much two. kind of if building for every one, session. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll just trash it and kind of, yeah, I, you know, there's always a couple that you just like, oh, that was a good one. Mm. And I'll never get that bastard back. But, uh, yeah, it's part of the joy of it. As long as you do a good recording. Yeah. And um, I'm not that good at recording the stuff, I'll be honest. I, I tend to always just hit record. Yeah. But this, like I said, this L1 has been good for me because I'm just like, I trust it coming out. And that's been a big part of it for me, mm. just going, it sounds good coming out. It sounds fine. And I'll go out of it and I'll hit two DIs and then I'll go into a couple of 
312 Hyder Cappy Priest and go into the you know Crane Song Head Quantum and that's a sick chain. Actually sounds really good. And then or going into even better going into the two Overstay Imperial channels. Mm. Don't do it's that to me again. You told me about those world, the other day. Well, <laughs> man, it's just a, damn. When you take it out, you just like cry. It's just tragic man, without them. I've, it's the, the best channels. I've got for the money. Our recent chat about that, and also Nigel Mullaney in in that world of discussion at the moment, and uh, it's it's hitting me from all angles. Yes, yeah, so I need to find cool. a way of doing some some. Uh, rat gear on, on the channel ultimately you do you do, um, you do. You, Overstay would be a great place because he has I'd cd on the stuff he's mm. a synth guy um yeah jeff is 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 a fantastic guy absolutely amazing stuff yeah so yeah i'll jump forward in my list a bit although i think we will get to all of them uh quite a few people now have asked uh no mutable instruments in the setup question mark um why no mutable instruments is the question hmm. i guess yeah i don't just not small to you controversial just... i'm not a fan of the rings sound at all because that was a sound i used to mess with in max msp physical modeling stuff when i was trying to do algorithmic composition and it used to drive me insane <laughs> after a while and it only ever reminds me of that time whenever i hear that sound so it's a triggering sound for me mm. uh so i can't any thought for the rest of the lineup or just I mean, not... fantastic absolutely awesome yeah i mean i just love i i every time i've i've used a platz or whatever i've thought this thing is super handy i mean amazing to have again just instant joy and, and sound but i guess um i like to work a bit harder for my sounds i suppose mm. Uh, I think it's in, not always. Yeah, but when the synth, in the synth, the synth in the, if it's going to be a synth tone, I want to work a bit harder. I don't. Uh, um, I mean, that's a bit of a weird thing to say. It sounds a bit pretentious. If I was going out live, I would definitely have one. Yeah, Let's put it that way. No, no, you mean packing? You've got to lose some control at some point live, unless you take a massive yeah, system. Going out live, it'll be amazing live. Because it's so obviously they're they're amazing units. I'd love to check out the more kind of the marbles and all of that kind of stuff appeals to me more. Yeah, some uh, of it. I was chatting with Matthew Shaw recently. When you look at some of the mutable stuff, it doesn't look it on face value, but yeah. it's super surge. When you look at some of the modules, it's like mm. you look at like shelves and some of the EQ, and it's like oh, the way that feeds back is kind of like a resonant EQ. I mean, it's not yeah. that circuit. It's not a clone. Things sure, like stages I mean, is like the most modular module of like here is a segment of something and it will do something. It's like patch programming a dual slope or, or whatever. So there's all these yeah, parallels right. kind of hidden in there. So cool. I think, yeah, maybe things Man. like marbles and things would, would really speak to you. But I, I'd, I'd also say, and I don't mean anyone in the chat asked it this way kind of a, as a loaded question, yeah. but it's one I get no, a lot about like mutable and make notes kind of like, why aren't they in there? And it's yeah. They don't have to be. Um, no, no. I love both of That's them, right. but they don't. Yes. Don't ever let anyone tell you you have to have anything ever. That's no, just not. That's for sure. That's not you know yeah, yeah, what yeah. either is trying to do. Um, we, we spoke about the dark matter. Um, yeah. What was the specific Sorry. module? The CV to DMX. It's not DMX. Oh, that. Oh, good question. Hang on. SY1 Synesthesia, I think it's called. SY1. Okay. Yeah, SY1 is Synesthesia. There's not many DMX controllers that I could find at the time. Uh, this one works. I'm going to try and my find life. it for the show notes. Yeah, uh, quite good. Is it by Sound Machines? Could be. I think it's an Italian company or something. Yes. Yeah. It looks like you might have yeah. a black panel on it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've found it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's cool. Easy question with an easy answer. What's the piano? Steinway. It's a Steinway upright that I got for 1500 American dollars, which is a bloody bargain, really. Uh, but, you know, sometimes people are, you know, there's a, someone's grandma's piano. They wander out of the house and... Uh, yeah, it's a real old girl. Beautiful thing. Mm. Very long sustain. It's not for everything, but it's just like a ballad. Ballad, ballad monster. Machine. 
it's good for me because I don't really, I couldn't play a sprightly rhythmic piece to save my life. <laughs> so it's good for me to bathe in again. It's like it's a it's a little pool. Yeah, a little uh, metallic swimming pool. Related sort of question, really, because imagine it's how you'd approach the roads and the Mellotron. Uh, Detroit Berlin um, asked, uh, yeah, do you route the Mellotron roads or piano through the modular? Yeah, actually, you know, the, the Mellotron through the 301 was the reason I got the Mellotron, because at the Sonic Ranch I had, <laughs> the, what was so nice about the Mellotron is it, it's got this tabletop space, so I had this really cool setup of just the 301, the laptop, and the little, you know, little key the little artillery keyboard and just a few little bits all nicely fitting on top of this mellotron and i could play in the mellotron and change the volume on it and play it into this looper that i'd made and and then punch in and punch out and do other layers and i was just like dude i'm just like it was just sound creation it was just a really really lovely combination i have the nagra sitting on top of it at the moment and it's a beautiful combo. Just doing sound on sound loops with the Mellotron is a uh, it's a great inspiration piece. Mm. It's always just good to have a sound. It's also nice to have a sound source that can kind of give you a reference for where your sounds are at. Just even yeah. if they sound any good, because you're like, am I making a bad sound here? And then you hear a Mellotron sound, which is you know, has its tonal character, and go, oh yeah, my sounds are way too dark, or it's like not got enough juice, or whatever. It's a really good sounding unit, the Mellotron. Mm. It's, uh, it's pricey. Uh, yeah. I have my issues with it, but it's, uh, it's really it's kind of a great tool to have. Mm. Again, the real crowd pleaser when you're in writing sessions and stuff, everyone loves that machine. Yeah. Everyone can go to it and get something out. You'll make songs. It makes songs. Mm. You know. It, I mean, that's, what, that's why it's so, so great, so valuable. Yeah, a few people asked, but uh, Pacific Voltage Club, any sonic samples of this branching out to chord concepts that you spoke about with your voice and the NTOs? Right, I mean, good question. A request Not for a future really. nitty gritty, maybe? Yeah, I did do it in the nitty. I did, there was one, I can't, I wish I remember the episode, and I made one actually on the artist mix for them from Avid. I made one in the computer which did the same thing, but for control for data inside Ableton and I uh, controlled three Melodynes with it. So you have the Melodyne pitches controlled by six faders and it was a beautiful thing and it really worked. I was so satisfied with it. It came, it was exactly like the catalyst. I basically made the catalyst in software and then, um, it worked in Ableton, and so I was like, "Oh, th this is nice." So that is available somewhere on one of my nitties. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't know which one. You'll have to listen uh, to them all. That was my you have to <laughs> suggestion. Yeah, that's the only way. Kind of find. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, that's a great. I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe you've inspired me to try to make that my next video nitty. I've been wanting to know what to do for a while. Uh, it's just I've been putting it off because it's, it's going to be quite a lot of a ball ache to yeah. bring that patch back to life, but. Um, so be it. Yeah, you want some. It, it was it was good. It, it it was a. I'll admit when I finally got it going with a voice. It was not quite as beautiful as I thought it would be, but that's just because I wasn't able to modulate very well through the granular sample. So I need to do that in a better way. Mm. But anyway, note to self, not to you. If you were. Uh... If you want some nitty gritty ideas, I'm certainly uh, one to throw plenty of requests your way. Oh, <laughs> yes, uh, dude. I'm, Send me uh, some uh, more pictures from around time. the studio, and uh, I'll I'll ping a big list All back right. at you that you're free to ignore. Oh, mate, no, I'd lo oh, that'd be really good. Um, that'd be really good. Uh, last few questions, because uh, conscious for time, and um, thank uh, really thank you for the time to to chat. Oh, it's man. cool. Oh, it's been great. Um, but the uh, any thoughts on the 4MS Smur Spectral Multiband Resonator? Didn't you really speak to me. Didn't speak to me uh, okay. sonically. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's uh, those things again can be triggering for me. Okay. <laughs> There's certain sounds which are which are triggering, and that that I kind of yeah, I, I appreciate it. I love what that company does. They obviously they make amazing stuff. Uh, yeah. Also, just the general workflow of it just didn't appeal to me. Mm. I'd rather achieve that in my own handmade way if I was going to try to go for it. I wouldn't want it in a module. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. 
Um, Metahedron, uh, what synth would you like to use for an entire track, be it modular or otherwise? Do you get into that thing, the kind of like one synth does everything, you make percussion on it, you make some bass, some leg mm. chord tone. I mean, you do that with your voice. <laughs> yeah. You've been no, doing no, that yeah, you sure. know, really expressively for a long time. You know, but... the ARP 2600 is the best for that, I think. Okay. I don't have one, but I borrowed one. Pat from the Black Keys lent me his, and I was like, oh, my God, this thing is its like a perfect synth. It's, uh, that, that's amazing. You could do it with the ARP 2600. I'd be more than happy to do that with that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, the, the mini Moog is to an extent you can you can do it obviously you have to layer it but um, it's it's really lovely just to do every kind of sound with it yeah uh, but yeah I, and and so and I, just because of the ergonomics it's pure ergonomics it's just an incredible layout of of the flow of the mind I wish they'd made it this more modular just a little bit it would have been so good. Obviously, you you've hit me to these. Was it JHS? Is that the company? Uh, J. Who makes the minis, the mini mods? AJH. AJH. Okay. Yeah, that stuff looks really good. That stuff. I, I would. That appeals to me. Mm. Uh, just being a mini user and owner, um, I'd love that. I'd love to have someone just build a full mini but in a modular style that'd be a fun system to play on yeah alan's work is the one i'd love for Alan. i mean i know it's not necessarily the best business sense <laughs> but i'd love yeah. it if alan could just go right app is next and just do what he did with that mini mod Ooh. range right through an app or other yeah. classic synths. i mean he's such an amazing engineer i think his work's really underrated um, well, well, not yeah. people that try it love it. They they know it, but I, I one of those like like Geranolog, we just want to kind of scream about their stuff. Definitely, Does really, really good work. You see, I've been Omar and his stuff is next. Nice. Um, any kind of last kind of closing statements? Any hint as to what's coming on hanging out with audio files? Who have you got on? Can you yeah, can you give that a away? Very, very big guest. Um, I'll just say he's won an Academy Award. Mm. how about that nice <laughs> so you can you can have your guesses about that uh yeah i was really happy to get this guy on i've been waiting to put that show out for a while um so that's next yeah i, I do have to get around to the to the hanging out with the audio files so if listeners who are a bit disappointed by the schedule i've, I've been i say schedule now i've been in america so long um uh yeah i'm not having an easy time just with my productivity in general in this quarantine I'm, I'm having a um it's really taken me ages to do anything i think that's the case for a lot of people in it but um so yeah my apologies for the lack of bi-weekly regularity but you know be patient yeah good things will come <laughs> and especially i started to do these video things you know i did one with a uh, the motor music and then the theremin music stuff and uh I'm not a video maker, so like I haven't to grapple with the cameras and and you know editing and I'm still grappling know, with it. It's like green flow and editing on that. Yeah, it's a real like what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Seven years in, that's the same question. Yeah. Like what the hell am I yeah. doing? Super quick answers. At the same time, yeah. Let's go super yeah. quick answers because yeah. we are out of time. But um, okay. it did get asked earlier, and I, I missed it. Um, any tube slash valve modules? No. Okay quick answer <laughs> um, would, it, would love that in a way but no yeah seems they, yeah seems pretty cool yeah the metasonics maybe i don't know not that bothered about that though mm -hmm. uh fumana or bark filter you tried either of those oh, i would love the fumana yeah i do like that i tried it at nam with the guy at frap and it was lovely 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 thing so cool yeah dope mm dope <laughs> don't often say dope that one got a dope <laughs> yeah i don't you love that thing right ben fumana yeah i, I like i call it hiding Super melodies dope. in it making a really dense yeah, patch yeah. and then picking little filter bangs out just let things sing and fade and shift and oh, drift and ox is great for it um, very very how's it as a vocoder is it good yeah, because unlike others, you don't have to split the bands. On the back that's 12 bands, you can do six band vocoding because you need six analysis right. and six synthesis bands. Or like carrier and modulator thing. The Fumana has a whole other Fumana behind the panel. 
<laughs> effectively. It's like a double yeah. circuit that you only access when you go into vocoding. Uh, really, really cool. Yeah. A lot of HP, but probably worth it. Yeah, I think so. Like in that case, I'm not sure about, you know, I'd rather throw one of those in and just have done with it and just like get vibing with it because I would use it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the kind of thing when you're using Eurorack, it's like a piece like that calls to you, like use this thing, it's crazy. Mm. I mean, you know, that's what you want, isn't it? Because <laughs> you can do a lot in the computer and like, if it's going to be functional, sometimes it can be a bit like, eh. mm. hard to justify the time. But if it's magic weird it looks crazy and it's just that it sounds um, really compelling every time and of course that's what you want to be spending your life doing <laughs> yeah yeah um just a couple of kind of housekeeping -y type points quantum space asked about what happened to super chat um super chat is a way on youtube live streams where you can hit a little dollar icon under the comments to kind of throw up like a tip jar effectively throw a bit of money in to support this i can't enable that uh, for re for effectively Google AdSense management that I am in, um, so I can't have super chat. You can support on Patreon, which is really cool. But as I said in the chat, it's not. Um, I, I know it's not for everyone, and that's totally cool. And just coming, supporting, asking questions, sharing these videos is really killer. And it's grown from nothing seven years ago. <laughs> I never used a camera, learned on the job. You know, getting to speak to people like Jamie and do the work I do really is amazing. So any support anywhere is really cool. Patreon help pays the bills, helps it keep going, but, you know, I don't want to push it. I don't want anyone to feel bad like I'm pushing Patreon on them. It's for some people, it's not for others. But, yeah, I can't enable Super Chat, maybe in the future. Um, but, yeah, Kel Audio, uh, friend Steve, says he wrote a vocoder for the 301. Nice. And is available. I might get a link or something and ping that along to you in an email. But yeah, let's wrap it up before we go on massive tangents that both of us are very <laughs> much capable of capable of going oh, on. Oh yeah. Um and thank you again, Jamie, for your time. Man, thanks um, a lot, Ben, for everything you've done. Like community salutes you. Thanks for coming uh, on no. Esoteric Modulation. I'll put the link to that in the live chat as we wrap up for more Absolutely. general chat, some yeah. modular, some other chat. Um and yeah. yeah let's do it again in the future sometime i love um, that i love that I completely you know i appreciate people's time <laughs> i don't mean come on in a Definitely. month but if people oh, have questions i could maybe start mounting up questions for next time i'd or, love that q a um, only that would be just awesome mm, count me in man anytime amazing. seriously great it's been brilliant thanks for everyone in the chat for tuning in and uh you know see you next time yeah great i will yeah see everyone next time Cheers. Brilliant. Bye.